Bishops of Benton and also folks there in Decatur County included in that warning as it shifts off towards the northeast and continues to move on through. That one, as I recall, moving about 70 miles per hour. And Dan was really surveying the rotation with that storm just a few minutes ago. So a lot to keep an eye on tonight as this next round of storms is starting to come in. If you're maybe just hearing some of this, you're just waking up, you know, make sure that you're sticking with us here because we want to get you ready for what's going on with these storms. Looks like a new tornado warning has been issued here. Um, let's see if we can get that to pop on out and give you an idea of what's going on. Try it again. You got it. I've got it. Well, I don't see it moving, but there. <laughs> Would you hit it? Thank you, Melanie. Melanie has come in. She's going to be taking over here in just a few moments. Here's that tornado warning. Um, this one is for Dixon, Hicksman, and Humphreys County until 246 with this part of the storm working off towards the northeast right now. And that's going to be headed into uh, Dixon and also or headed towards Dixon as it moves towards the northeast. Dan? All right, Lisa, here's that new track for that new tornado warning. And so you can see it moving northeast. At a pretty good clip, gonna take it to Hurricane Mills. We talked about you before at 216. You got eight minutes, Hurricane Mills, and it looks like um, it probably comes right over you or very close to you. So you've gotta drop to that safe spot very quickly. Um, you don't wanna run. You absolutely don't wanna panic. You just wanna move with the purpose. You wanna just get the family, say it's go time. Um, hopefully the safe spot is all ready to go and get there. Milltown, you get a little more time, but don't delay. Get right to that safe spot. 226, McEwen and McEwen High School, 227. Tennessee City, 232. If you don't have a smartphone that's well charged, you just got a TV set, that's fine. Turn it up loudly, full volume, and you'll hear us. So we're going to read these cities to you. We'll, we'll let you know when your uh, area is impacted. Tennessee City, 232. Like we said, Adams Crossroads, 234. Dixon at 238. Now, Dixon is not far from Nashville. Dixon County High School, 238, Van Laer, 240. So that's why we're saying between 3 and 4 in the morning, it looks like this cell, this band, this first one, coming into Nashville a little bit earlier um, than, than what was said a couple of times this week. But it's the same ballpark time. As we get close to sunrise, we'll have to deal with that. Racing toward the northeast. So three tornado warnings right now for the mid-state. Let's check on the expiration time. The 2.30 expiration time is for Southern Stewart, most of Houston, and Northern Humphreys. South of there, Southern Humphreys until 2.45. Southwest Dixon, northwestern parts of Hickman, and the northernmost part of Perry. And then the storm, the most dangerous part of the storm is about to leave uh, Benton County. It's still in Benton County, but about to leave, and it's about to leave Perry County. And so it looks like that tornado warning was just canceled. Just dropped off there, but um, until 2.30. So they just dropped that off a little farther west. So Jackson's in the clear, Lexington is in the clear, and you can see it's two supercell thunderstorms moving along, the little blobs of pink, one, two. The southern one has a more significant lightning show, and so the southern one is likely the stronger of the two because it's got a better updraft. It's just got a better appearance right now. And it's got a better appearance, not just from lightning and reflectivity, but also from our rotation detector. Here's that rotation, sort of broad, but this is again, a couple miles off the ground. 10 miles across for that broad rotation there. It may be much tighter, closer to the ground. Let's survey the wind speeds within that rotation though, north of Lobelville. And it looks like close to 90 miles an hour rotation. So four, negative 41 doesn't mean minus 41 miles an hour. It just means 41 miles an hour toward the radar site. And then 47 is 47 miles away from the, 47 miles per hour away from the radar site. So a collective speed of 88 miles an hour. That's how we uh, use that there. Let's check out debris tracker and we don't see any signs of debris. What we're looking at when we're looking at debris detector is for that rotation, and I just showed you to match up with a pocket of cool colors. But all these colors in through here, where the rotation is, they're pretty warm. 
And so we can say that we don't see debris up to a couple miles up, which is good. Earlier tonight, one of the tornadoes that was um, over southwest Kentucky, uh, when it was in Stewart County, I believe, we actually had debris to 16,000 feet. So that's essentially three miles, three miles and change into the atmosphere. The, the, the radar detected some debris there. So here's a look at the radar showing severe thunderstorms in southern Kentucky. The good news with these, the appearance of them doesn't look overly formidable around Russellville. It just looks like though all these downpours are probably producing damaging wind gusts. There's Bowling Green between Hopkinsville and Oak Grove. And then down through Dover, looks like a strong storm, but on the south side, it's more intense. So that's why we have that severe thunderstorm. It's a big window for damaging wind. You can see that big yellow polygon. That's a massive severe thunderstorm warning. That thing continues until 3 o'clock. So until 3 o'clock for Stewart County, Montgomery County. I'm going to just uh, show you the edges here a little more clearly. Right through Dixon, so Dixon County, Hickman County, Northern Lewis, most of Perry County. In fact, all of Perry's in that. All of Humphreys and all of Houston. So about eight counties or so in that severe thunderstorm warning. Now, we're not saying that you can't get rain before this main event comes through because some of you actually have. And so here is a look at one of the cells, a couple of little showers here and there, but one of the cells, this thing rolled through Nolansville but an hour ago. It's trying to develop, but thankfully, the atmosphere ahead of this main event is capped. And so there's, essentially that means there's a little pocket of warm air a couple miles above the ground preventing the updraft from this thing around Lafayette, Red Boiling Springs from getting out of control and making a monster storm. So this is probably going to run out of our area and just be the way it is right now. So Hermitage Springs, so you might hear a downpour may get your attention, um, but don't worry until any warnings are issued. You don't need, need to worry then. You just um, have to act then. But what I'm saying is that if you hear a downpour, it doesn't defi definitely mean in the next couple of hours that we'll have some damaging weather from it. We really look like we're going to have to wait for the main event back to the west. Heavy rain continues to fall in Bowling Green. Wow, this is really materializing into a uh, more of a flooding episode there uh, in the wake of what they've already had. It's just a pretty terrible Russellville, Bowling Green, north of Glasgow. All these, we call them little box cars. It looks like a train going down the track. Clusters of very heavy downpours marching over the same general area, almost like a train going down the tracks. So in southwest Kentucky, I, I would expect we'll see an extension of that flash flood warning going up in that general direction in time. We don't have it yet. It's probably coming. And I notice just west of Paris, I haven't seen a surface map lately, but I wonder if this is the cold front right here, making one last band of storms. That could be it. Let's take a look and see if we have any other storms behind it. And it's possible that's just part of the cold front. The back edge of all this, once we can get this through us, we're golden. Severe threat will be done. It's a ways away. It just is working through Memphis right now. So Memphis in the next 45 minutes will be done with severe weather. Arkansas, Missouri, you're in the clear. Illinois, pretty much in the clear. And now it's really focused on Tennessee. There's another look at forewarned real-time radar. These storms are really zooming along. Time now, 2.15. Uh, coming up on 2.16. Even though the radar says 2.17, it's just um, it's about 2.15, 2.16 time. Severe thunderstorm warning expired for Christian and Todd. So now in Kentucky, we don't have a severe thunderstorm warning. So we had one just a moment ago, and it was right, oops, it was right in this zone, right in through here with that cell. But as I mentioned just a moment ago, the storms are just, they're not really strong there. They're just very heavy rain producers and lightning producers. So thank goodness for that. So now we're focused on this batch of storms right here. And it's this, and it looks to me like the rotation may be increasing in northern Perry County. And so I'm going to take another look at this. Again, it's got a tremendous lightning signature on it. And probably right here at this indentation. You call it a hook echo in meteorology, a little indentation. And it's made by strong winds feeding the storm, coming in and sort of pushing all that mass back toward the north and west. New picture just came in from our radar. Let's look at the rotation there. Some black indicates some very heavy rain, if not some hail with that. 
Yeah, it's right in that ballpark. Right in that ballpark. So strong inbounds, new uh, rotation detector just came back, and strong outbounds. And let's just look at some of these numbers. Here's the wind toward the radar, 64, and away about 26. Still collectively about 90 miles an hour, Lisa. Yeah, you know, and I tell you, there's so much going on tonight. We've got so many different... Okay, here, all right, Lisa, you back? I think I heard you. Oh, am I back? There you go. Here I am. I am back once again. Looks like that new severe thunderstorm warning there. But, you know, we were tracking those storms coming out of Henderson County. We've got some reports coming out of that area that there is um, widespread damage with trees and power lines right along 412, just off to the west of Lexington. So these storms are producing some damage, and uh, that was right over here. And you can see how they moved on towards the east now. And, of course, we've got still a severe thunderstorm warning with that same cell. And then, of course, a tornado warning there as well. So the severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 2.30. We're right now at 2.20, so a little while longer as these storms are moving eastward. And then we're looking, of course, at, at part of this activity that came out of Lexington, shifted a little bit farther up to the northeast. And there you go with that tornado warning there. So still so much activity. And you know, you don't normally see a watch that or warning, I should say, that big, but it is covering a huge area. And this whole line is going to be moving right here into the Nashville area, too. So, you know, if, if you're watching from Nashville, you're up tonight. We are still going to see these storms moving right into your area. It's just taking a little bit longer. So we're estimating perhaps around 3, 3.30 with these storms making their way into Nashville over through Hendersonville and also into Brentwood as well and back down to Franklin too as they continue to move on towards the east right now. But with these two tornado warnings that remain in effect, we just want to make sure that folks are, are in their right places. So we've got Melanie Layden has joined us tonight and she's going to take the controls here for just a few moments and we can survey some of these storms. We'll start up here with this first tornado warning that remains in effect right now and get a closer inspection. That is until 2.30 and it is right on top of folks there in Aaron right now. So we'll dive down and see that storm here. Wow, and we're talking about folks that are in Aaron, in the thick of it, in Denmark, and Grays Crossing, and over around Tennessee Ridge as well, with the storm moving to the east around Pollard, too. And we can take a look there also at our rotation detector, and that's going to show us if we have any, any of these reds and greens close together. We've got one little batch right up through here where we might be seeing a little bit of rotation in that storm, and also in the southern end of the storm as well. Um, perhaps a little bit of rotation, a little bit broader here. Here, but those are a couple of spots we'd want to continue to watch tonight. And got a new report in. Want to share this with you. Looks like we've got a tornado possibly spinning up in along the Perry Humphreys County border. And that's going to be crossing Highway 13 north of Lobelville in the next 10 minutes. So let's jump down to that storm as well. So that's going to be right there on that Humphreys and Perry County line. So that's going to be the one a little bit lower here um, with a particular storm right in here. We'll switch over to that rotation detector and see if we can bullseye that and get a good spot. There we go. So right there, there's where we were talking about. That is uh, about 13 miles north of Lobelville. So this one seems to be spinning up. Um, a tornado right now. So folks who are in this area, and we, we can see that right along I-40 right now, off to the north of Lobelville, we can get a little bit closer in and maybe pick up a few of these roads too that are around this, this spot right through here. Buffalo, and you may see that on the interstate as you pass by. We've got um, Barron Hollow Road, we've got Daniel Road, and you can see Brown Bend over here to the north, Bucksnort, and many of you have seen that Bucksnort community also off the interstate as you're passing by. But if you live in Bucksnort tonight, if you live right there, um, right along 40, where we're seeing that Perry and close to the Perry and Humphreys County line, please go ahead and head to your safe spot right now because you are under a tornado warning, and it looks like there could be a little bit of rotation starting to take place. Perhaps uh, a tornado appears to be 
be spinning up there. This is moving towards the northeast pretty quickly, so we're going to give you some time frames, and uh, you may have to redo that one more time because um, they're moving about 50, 60 miles an hour. I mean, they're fast movers, Melanie. You're going to see that as you track these storms tonight. They're moving right along. So here's an estimation of what time they're going to be there, and you can expect it around the Salt Lick area at around 2:36, Nunnally around 2:39, over to Hickman County High School at 2:42, and Bon Aqua at 2:49, East Hickman High at 2:51. So these are the communities where you need to be on that lowest level of your home in your storm shelter if you've got that or your basement under a steady piece of furniture. If not, just the lowest interior room, we're talking about a bathroom or perhaps a, a closet might be a good place for you to be. The idea is you want to be away from windows. You're trying to provide yourself some protection from flying debris because tornadoes, when they spin up, they suck all kinds of stuff up inside them and that stuff spins around and that's where many people are hurt. Be sure to use pillows, blankets, and even a helmet can help you out with these storms as um, as they move across and you don't want to be in a mobile home or in a car during a tornado. We're also getting reports here with this particular storm that it is likely we are seeing uh, right there along Highway 13 that circulation starting to spin up along that area. All right, so it's going to be between Lobelville and I-40 along the Perry Humphreys County line where there likely is a tornado. There this is go. what we call a, a warning ring and that is another indicator aside from what we're seeing here on our radar of where we are likely seeing one of those tornadoes develop. And that is right along that county line. All right, looks like um, Melanie, we're going to take a look at another storm. Looks like over in Montgomery and Dixon County, southern Montgomery, northwestern Dixon County, we have a new tornado warning that is going about to come out here. Um, so we're watching this storm develop as well. So let's see, we're over to Dixon County and also, there we go, up towards um, Montgomery County. So right in through here, let's see, we're looking for this rotation. Um, so we're looking at Dixon County right in here, perhaps right in through here is where we're seeing uh, some of that rotation taking place. The greens and the yellows coming together. That's actually Houston County, so maybe not that far over as we're looking for it. We know we've got a little bit of rotation here. We're just trying to detect there, exactly there where it is. The there warning. is our warned area. So we were close. We were close right through here with that, that particular warning in effect until 3 o'clock um, in the morning. It's hard to believe, and we're right now at 226. So this is the area we're looking at right here. Uh, the storm is close to folks in Irem and moving off toward the northeast right now. I'm headed towards you in Dixon County and also headed towards you if you are in, um, in the Montgomery County area as it shifts off and moves towards the northeast as we track the storm. But here's the rotation I believe we were spotting there that was um, showing signs of a tornado developing. So that's moving to the northeast at about 50 miles per hour right now. So that's the latest in a series of tornado warnings that we've seen moving across. And here it shows you we've got Houston County High School. We'll see the impact of that um, storm moving through at 229. Palmyra at 4, 242 and Cunningham around 247. Clarksville right around 253. So to remind you, safe place, best place to be if you're in these areas if you know someone over in Clarksville, you might want to give them a heads up that there is a storm that's capable of producing a tornado starting to come through in any of those communities that I mentioned just a second ago. That warning um, in effect until 3 a.m. And we'll turn it back over to Melanie. All right, hey everyone, back here tracking here behind the scenes and you know, we've been watching all these storms that have been developing all throughout the day or the night really into these uh, early morning hours and it's uh, kind of sped up a little bit quicker than what we originally had anticipated, but these are all coming in ahead of that front and uh, I've been wanting to check out and, and look at this real quickly. So we do have a, a couple of these tornado warnings still active, a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings and now even a flash flood warning, but I real quickly want to look at the regional radar and just see what's been happening 
happening uh, back to our west. You know, we've been watching this for a while as this front comes through, and this is what's producing storms all the way down from Texas up through Arkansas. They've had it real rough uh, through the overnight hours. And look at all that lightning. I'm going to turn that off here for just a quick second so you can see the storms in through Tennessee and Kentucky. It's been hit pretty hard uh, through the overnight hours as well. And this is all part of that front that's making its way through, bringing us that severe weather. So we'll get a little bit closer back here toward uh, our area here in Nashville. And this is all really out to the west of Nashville currently working. The latest tornado warnings are still off to the west. It will include areas like portions of Montgomery County, Dixon County as well, Humphreys and Perry. This one goes until 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they've been issuing this one uh, out of Stewart County as well. Severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. This one was located over Aaron, moving northeast at 50 miles an hour just moments ago. And they've also continued that tornado warning that includes Hickman, Humphreys, and Perry County down here. It's a little bit further south. This one here includes areas like Waverly going until 245 this morning. So a little bit longer to go on this one as well. And uh, this one that's been spotted producing tornado that was located near Hurricane Mills. 15 miles south of Waverly, and that one's moving very fast at 60 miles an hour to the northeast. So uh, if you live in these communities, you want to make sure that you are in your safe place right now. We are on TV here on News 4, but we're also streaming on the News 4 app as well. So if you happen to maybe lose power with some of these storms coming through, great idea to make sure your cell phones are fully charged right now, especially if you live in Nashville and areas east. You've still got time to make sure you have everything together. Your phone's charged, put a flash light next to your nightstand in case of those power outages and Dan made a good point earlier. Make sure you have tennis shoes or closed toed shoes nearby or even in your safe place, whether that be some kind of interior closet, maybe a, a, a half bathroom underneath the staircase on the lowest level of your house, because if a tornado were to come through and it caused a lot of damage, you want to make sure you have those shoes to be able to walk through all the rubble and debris. We've also been hearing a lot of areas uh, knocking out cell service too. Uh, that happened out in Henry County, I believe earlier as a big storm and and possibly a tornado there came through. So uh, just definitely want to make sure you have a plan in place and we don't want to scare you, but these are uh, definitely some storms have been producing a lot of tornadoes through the night, especially off to the west of us. And now here they are moving into Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky. So here's a time lapse here on the radar of the last 30 minutes. You can see uh, very fast moving storms. I mean, these are blowing over counties here over the last 30 minutes. And right now we got some rotation down here. This is a little bit closer. We were watching earlier right above I-40. This is back toward uh, the Buffalo area out near Lobelville. And they've got some rotation detected there as well. So that's what that big circle is. That's that shear marker there, that rotation detector. And as we turn on the rotation detector, there's a new radar scan, so it just moved, moved up a little bit down uh, just south of Hurricane Mills. We'll zoom in here and get some street names. I'm going to turn that off for just a second so we can get a little deep dive here. Where you see those red and green colors really close together touching, that's a good indicator that we do have some rotation here. We look for the really bright greens and the bright reds, and that usually indicates that we have uh, some pretty significant rotation here. So this is actually just north of Bucksnort, uh, going to be right over the county line, it looks like. And so if you live maybe out near Berryman Hollow Road in near White House, this is White House off to the west of Nashville, not White House up in Sumner and Robertson County. Uh, your Furnace, Salt Lake, this is right in your neighborhood. Duke Hollow, you're getting just poured on right now with this rain as well. Uh, so this is our rotation detector to take a look at what the National Weather Service is seeing and why they're issuing these tornado warnings. Turn the radar back on here just to get a view of what's going on and we'll zoom out just a little bit and all these communities around here you can see the bright colors in the radar now near Taylortown White House spot. You're seeing a lot of heavy rain and and possibly even some hail with this as well. We'll take a little bit of a zoom out here and you can see the hail swath off to our west and just all that hail that has come down with some of these storms. This all the way back toward Lexington out near Waverly and we're also seeing this definitely north of us into southern Kentucky. A lot of hail was produced with these storms earlier as well and also some flooding to be concerned about too. We had that flash flood uh, warning that goes until 945 in the morning and this includes a very 
wide, broad area here of Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky. We've had just a, a lot of rain, Dan, come down in the last uh, several hours, uh, or really not even that long. It's really just been since the late hours of last night, and this will continue as we head into the early morning hours. Yeah, this, this is going to be several more hours, Melanie. We're not going to be in the clear till probably 10, possibly 11, but probably 10. Uh, in Middle Tennessee for a severe weather potential. I think it's going to happen about the same time or end the same time for South Central Kentucky, our easternmost counties. But look at that band of storms on 41 real time radar moving toward Nashville. So it's been very quiet in Nashville for really all of tonight. We've had a couple of showers that have developed down toward Columbia, moving up toward Nolansville. Now what's left of those is up toward, uh, looks like around Burksville, Kentucky. And this is the first batch that's going to move on through and probably cause the most problems for the greater Nashville area. So distance from Nashville, it's probably, I don't know, about 50 miles away, something like that. Uh, Melanie may check that here in a moment. And then we're going to take a, a close look at that tornado warning down in parts of Humphreys County, parts of Hickman County. It's just pushing toward the east. So this is for damaging winds. So she's tracked a big part of that line into the heart of Dixon County. It looks like Adams Crossroads right now. If you're watching from Pinewood in your area, 237. The current time now is about that. So Dixon, 243 or so. 243 Dixon County High School. Wrigley at 247. Burns at 248. And 250 at Creekwood High School. But Melanie, if we could uh, identify the pocket of most intense rotation, this has generated some debris. This is actually an observed tornado on radar moments ago. Not far from Milltown, east of Hurricane Mills. And it looks like it's in line with Burns in Dixon County. So around Water Valley, Poplar Grove, Salt Lick, White House, as Melanie mentioned moment, a moment ago, that's not on the border of Sumner and Robertson. That's back in Hickman County and just to the west of Bon Aqua. It may roll over Burns, may stay just south of Dixon, may hit Bon Aqua. Here's the timing for the rotation, the timing for a tornado potential moving northeast at about 60. Can we do that real quick just because we got a new radar scan. So sure. I'm give you the, the latest, most accurate one. So here's that latest track, and this is for tornado potential. In Bon Aqua, 249. Burns, 252. East Hickman High School, about 252. White Bluff, 258. Fairview High School, in your area by 3 o'clock. And you know after Fairview High School, we get into Dixon County shortly after that. Looks like Kingston Springs at 303. In Harpeth High School at 304. So right near the interstate, this orange or brown line, this is Interstate 40. So coming out of Nashville, Interstate 40 isn't due west. It's more toward the west-southwest because eventually it gets down into Memphis, which is in the southwest part of the state. And so it's moving southwest, so that's why the tornado is right in that area, sort of paralleling the interstate and about to move into the southern part of Dixon County. Now we've got some TDOT cameras just south of Dixon. One, I think, is at 840, and so it's right in through here. So it's going to be interesting. I think it's camera 202, maybe it's 302. It's going to be interesting to see that. Uh, in time. In fact, could we pull up a Dixon camera and just see how that looks? And if we don't have that accessible, maybe we we'll pull up a Clarksville. Good. So this is, it looks like it's I-40 um, west of the I-40 and 840 interchange, mile marker 170. So I think around Bellevue, isn't Bellevue like mile marker 190, 191, something like that. So about 20 miles west of Bellevue. And this is a good look at what's going on. Can't really tell per se which direction we're looking in, but once that rain starts, I think we'll probably be able to uh, tell that. Clarksville, there's that tornado warning, by the way, until 245. And for the counties, it looks like, what do we have? Humphreys, northern, northwestern, most Hickman. Can't see it too well in through here. It's two tornado warnings. A little Dixon in there or no? A little bit. Just the, just the north west edge of it is in there. Okay, a little bit of Dixon, then we get into Houston County, parts of, uh, looks like a little sliver of Stewart County, the southeastern side of Stewart County. Oh, well, they just and then, updated it, see that? No, and then, and then this is Montgomery County. Did they extend it or change the expiration time? It's, just, it's moved a little bit. It's, it's still including Houston County there, but it's, got, it's more out of Aaron now. Got it. All right. Aaron, you're in the clear. Cumberland City, you're in the clear. So this is a second tornado warning on the south side of uh, Clarksville, staying south of Clarksville. Let's track this. And so you can see there's Dotsonville, there's Palmyra, and then Sango is just uh, east-southeast of downtown Clarksville. Pretty good rotation area here. 
Again, the greens indicate winds toward the radar, and the reds indicate wind away from the radar when we're looking at rotation detector. This is just the, the real-time radar view, and right where we see that little cusper indentation, that's where we have the potential tornado in progress. Henrietta, 255, Cheap Hill, 257, Shady Grove, in your area just before 3 in the morning. Cheatham County High School about 301 and Sycamore High School at 303. So if you're in this zone here, again, south of Clarksville, but in Montgomery County, parts of, uh, looks like northern parts of um, Dixon County and the far eastern part of Houston County, you have to be in your safe spot. So we've talked about this a number of times. Lowest level of your house, put as many walls between you and the outdoors as possible. If you have a basement, that's always going to be better. And protect your body, protect your head from flying debris. That's the number one thing once you get into your safe spot. You don't just want to hang out. You want to crouch down low, uh, get into a bit of a ball position, and just stay safe. Use pillows, blankets, a helmet if you have a helmet. Um, a lot of people have bike helmets. Those work fine. A full frontal motorcycle helmet, um, ATV helmet, that's going to be better. A lot of people have those. And then abandoned cars and mobile homes. So if you're in a mobile home and a tornado comes along, a lot of times it goes airborne or it can roll and flip and cause some problems. You might be even more safe outdoors in a ditch lying flat um, with your body covered up by some pillows and blankets, believe it or not, than a mobile home when one is coming on in. So here's that center of circulation right here, um, not far from Highway 13. It's going to stay south of Highway 13, eventually cross this road that goes south of Cunningham down into the heart of Dixon County. And as it moves that way, eventually gets into Robertson County. But some of the communities impacted, there's Shiloh, there's Marion, Mount Zion, Dunn Chapel. Um, so Yellow Creek, Alice Mills, you're in the clear, is Louise. And then back towards, say, it looks like Cumberland Furnace. Yeah, and the, the chat right now is saying that it uh, looks like a tornado might be trying to spin up here right near Slayton. You yeah. can see it right there, Dan. Uh, looks like some rotation is going to be detected there. That's a northwest Dixon County. Right, yep. So, and, and, and we're just getting started. We have probably another 50 counties, 45 counties to go through uh, in eastern parts of the mid-state as all these move toward the east-northeast. You may say, why are we having this in the middle of the night? We have a live shot in Clarksville. Is that what you said? Good. Okay, here is a live view in Clarksville. And so this is the storm. The tornado potential is south of Clarksville, but we have a severe thunderstorm in the heart of Clarksville. A couple of cameras there. One is one of the street cameras, and one is one that's not far from the river. And so back on the left side um, of that other camera that the Cumberland River was in through there. So essentially right downtown Clarksville. New tornado warning. we got two new ones coming in right now, Dan. I'm, I'm going to zoom out here. We're going to go over both of them. Uh, sure. This first one's going to be, uh, this is from Montgomery and Cheatham and Dixon County. Okay. So we'll zoom into that one here. This is a new one issue. It's kind of right where we had that first one anyway. Um, now going till 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And now we have this one over here that's been issued. It's heading closer and closer toward the Kingston Springs area. This one goes until 315. This will be included for Hickman and Dixon County. Okay, yes. Yeah, so Cheatham not in that. Here's the main body of Dixon County. Most of Dixon County is in this new tornado warning that runs until 315. There's Charlotte, there's Dixon, there's Burns. And there's another view of that. Look at this. So we've got we've got that, but this one does get into Cheatham County. So this is that this is that new one, Melanie. That looks like it's for that northern cell. Right here is the potential tornado. We just had a lightning strike, and that is going to roll right toward 41A. Look at that. And then so once once you want to go back to links, just hit the forward button on the uh, on the remote. And we'll be okay, good. There yeah. we go. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so there it is. So a bunch of red polygons. If you'll be watching us. All these red polygons indicate tornado warnings. The yellow ones indicate severe thunderstorm warnings. So the yellow one extends this way, red, 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 red. Four active tornado warnings in the mid-state right now. Really intense rotation. This is looking sort of like what we were seeing in southwest Kentucky before. Let's take a look at the strength here. What is that uh, pixel right there? Probably 100? 72. 72, that's surprising. And then... Um, We've got, uh, we probably have collectively, if we get the, the brightest green and the brightest red, yeah, 120 miles an hour of rotation, something like that. Something like that. Moving right along the interstate. Could be a tornado along the interstate right now. Right near Jesse Work Road. That must roll, run parallel to the interstate. Hillcrest in your area, Harris Road. Some other roads we've been talking about. 
is Robinson's Chapel. So we're still west of Nashville. It's not Nashville's time yet. Time now 242. There's Kingston Springs Burns. It's right in this area. Potential tornado in progress or developing. And it's going to parallel the interstate for, interestingly, 10 miles. Wow, that is very, very, um, you know, this cars going this way into that general direction. So um, we don't want to see that for sure. Farther north, let's look at this one that's up into Montgomery County. And so south of Clarksville, Clarksville's not in that. And there's a lot of little interesting pockets of indentations along here in a couple of different rotation areas. But let's go with the southern one. That's in the heart of that tornado warning, and it's moving toward the east. So just south of Cunningham, but Cunningham, you've got to be in your safe spot right now. So um, you're too close. I mean, it could be on the south side of Cunningham. Rotation with this a little bit weaker, but it's still um, very evident, very apparent, probably collectively close to 60 miles an hour. So Cheap Hill, you're in that. Bellsburg, you're in that tornado warning as it moves toward the east-northeast. So in time, this one, this northern tornado warning, this cell that's up in that general area, it's going to impact Robertson County. It's almost inevitable. It may get into south-central Kentucky in time. But there's Cunningham, some of the other communities. And Melanie was just showing. It's like a line. And along that line, occasionally we get little pockets of rotation. That line extends from Fort Campbell, Oak Grove, all the way down through Dixon. So it's really starting to rain in Dixon. Um, and then it goes that way. Mm -hmm. Once we get toward good, we've got a whole bunch of cameras. Beautiful. And where is Mobile 4 right now? Okay, heading to Dixon and Western Davidson County. We're going to have to stay in close touch with Mobile 4 heading down the interstate because we could have a tornado developing or in progress on the interstate just west of there. Um, so we'll have to uh, make sure we don't get too far um, west of the Dixon area. Um, but yeah, we've got a bunch of great live cameras. The one on the lower left beneath me is Interstate 840 at 40, so 20 miles west of Bellevue. And then we've got heading toward Dixon um, in the other general direction. Um, you can see the full worn um, uh, mobile four, pardon me. And then the one above that is another TDOT camera showing how things are really lighting up the sky. So if there is a tornado that comes in around the interstate, we'll have a good view of that here in the next uh, 15, 10 minutes, something like that. So stay with us here at News 4. So here's I-65. We're getting toward the interstate. We're not quite there. We're not even in Davidson County. And in fact, we're not even in Cheatham County. But because these are moving so quickly early this morning, that's going to happen in a hurry. And with all of these, all these bands of very heavy rain, there could be damaging wind gusts. Just a mile off the ground today, winds are at 70 miles an hour. So you get a heavy downpour, come on in, and some of that wind energy inevitably is going to get down to the ground. There could be a little hail. We had some hail in Big Rock before. And so that was, um, you know, moderate size, about nickel size. And all this is moving toward Kingston Springs, Fairview, and Leapers Fork. So if you're in Dixon and you know somebody over toward Fairview and Kingston Springs, you might want to wake them up and say, hey, you know, you don't have a warning per se yet, but this storm that's over me is coming your way. What does the rotation look on the south side of Dixon right now? What's it look like? Seeing Pretty lots good. Power outages ahead of the line of storms. Yeah, I've been seeing Gusty this a South lot, winds. Dan. We've just uh, got confirmed from out in Lawrence County, okay. uh, over a hundred power outages there uh, of homes, or excuse me, over a thousand. I should say a thousand. It was like uh, 1,278 customers without power north of Lawrenceburg, and now we're getting more uh, reports of this ahead of this front because of all of the strong gusty wind. You know, we have that wind advisory in effect through the morning. These gusts are getting over. 50 miles an hour, even 60 miles an hour in some cases. Yeah, and so all the more reason to make sure all your mobile devices are fully charged because if one runs down and you don't have power, you can't recharge and keep things going. So have backups. If you have an iPad and a smartphone, make sure they're fully juiced or they're being powered right now. Two pockets of rotation, one and two, in the same general area on the south side of Dixon. Look at that, close to, looks like 130 mm -hmm. miles an hour of rotation on the south side of Dixon in the tornado warning. Next in line is Burns, and in comes Kingston Springs. There's Highway 70, so both of these are south of Highway 70, but pretty this. much along the interstate. It's possible we have twin tornadoes. We don't know, it is possible right now. They're both really intense, 
So Melanie's doing new storm track uh, for us. And moving very fast, too. If you, yeah, if you could slide the box to the, um, to the other side, it'd be great. Thank you. Fairview 304, Kingston Springs 305. Time now 247 on the radar. 308 in Pegram, Linton 310, Bellevue already at 314. So if, if, if it's Bellevue at 314, it's probably West Nashville at 320. In downtown Nashville, maybe, I don't know, something like 325, 330 uh, in time. Both of these intense areas of circulation. This is the southern one, should be very similar. So we have, yeah, Harpeth High School 303, Newsom 308, Bellevue 311 for that southern circulation. So they're two or three minutes apart. Hillsboro Acres, Vaughn's Gap 314, and Barry's Chapel at 314 too. I don't remember seeing that in Middle Tennessee where there's two really intense circulations very close to one another. How's that circulation? This is still a little broader in southern Montgomery County, so that's good, but we still have that tornado warning. And it looks like this western tornado warning that gets back into the northwest corner um, of, I guess it's Dixon County, it's north of Van Leer, um, things are improving there. So people are probably in the all clear there. I think you can say that in northwestern parts of Dixon County. There's that circulation. Farther south we get circulations. Three circulations that are really intense. Yeah, and this, this one's really the one to watch right here, Dan. We were just talking about it. It's even, looks like it's even strengthening with each radar scan too. It is. We'll take a look at that and just see what we're looking at at the moment. Looks like we have a new severe thunderstorm warning coming out. And this uh, will get Davidson. So we'll find out about that in just a second. Um, but the most important thing on the radar right now are these twin circulations in Dixon County. So there it is. Look at all this. So the Weather Service is going to keep doing this all night and with very good reason. If you have 50 mile an hour winds feeding this and then it rises up in the air, it's going to come back down with the same momentum, if not stronger. And so they're going to just continue to sort of blanket issue massive severe thunderstorm warnings as long as the line continues to look formidable like this and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Very, very intense from the Kentucky line all the way down to near Hohenwald. That is a huge severe thunderstorm warning that runs until 345. And so weather radios are going off all over Davidson County right now, Williamson County. So we're getting more and more people watching us here on News 4 as this big band of storms is about to get to Nashville. But what's this looks like now? I wonder if we have any debris with this. Let's take a look at debris and rotation. That could be debris. Mm -hmm. Just south of Dixon, let's get some roads. Let's look at rotation and then get some roads here. Okay. Dixon, East Dixon, there could be a tornado. Looks like there's a tornado in progress in Dixon right now, south yeah. side. So roads, so you gotta be in your safe spot, Dixon. There's East Dixon. What is that state route uh, 40, 46? 46. 46. Collective winds, 115 miles an hour. There's Pomona, Coldsburg. Can we zoom in a little tighter just yep. to get some of these roads? There we go. Pinewood Road. Mobile Four in Dixon. Where is he in Dixon? Because we have a tornado, um, not confirmed, but very, very likely. It looks like it is in progress. All right, he's gonna he's gonna get out of the south side of Dixon. Um, <clears throat> Good idea. Yeah, he, he just can't <laughs> I mean, be you can near see this thing. The torrential downpour, the windshield wiper is working. You can hardly see the road in, in front of him there. And, you know, we've got these two pockets down here, too, Dan. I'm going to scroll a little bit down south near Tidwell, Iron Hill. You're seeing some of this rotation as well. But this one, very intense, right just south of East Dixon, right on uh, Cowan Road. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Latest, uh, latest scan shows uh, right near Highway. Uh, is that 1845, State Route 47, <coughs> Sanker Drive, uh, right near Colesburg, and heading right for Burns. So Burns, you are right up next with this. This is very, very fast moving. Who, who is in Mobile 4? I believe it's Thomas Davis. Are we in communication? It looks like a signal. Good, it's back. I got concerned there that um, we just totally lost them. And, and so he's, he's in the shelter of a building now. He's um, at least partly protected. And what a live view of the storm. This is in Dixon. This is where we have a tornado potentially in progress right now, yep. just to the west of Burns. And we have Mobile 4 in Dixon right now. 
Um, you got to be, wow, I wonder if that was lightning or a power flash. There is debris. Yeah, Dan, look at that. Lofted debris, absolutely. And Lisa's still here, so it's around Colesburg, southeast side of Dixon. So moving away from downtown, but still in Dixon. Highway 46, Dan, um, yep. between Dixon there and I-40. There's I-40, that brown be... line right here. Highway so it's north of Interstate right 40. Here. But there's another circulation right close to the interstate. Wow. Yep. So if, if we get Thomas in about five minutes to go back toward downtown, but staying on the south side, he might run into some damage. It's quite possible. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, and this would be, I don't know, how many tornadoes have we had tonight? It's difficult to say because we've had one that may have stayed on the ground from Tennessee all the way into Kentucky and Bowling Green. Um, if not, it may have hopped and caused many touchdowns. Um, so it's tough to say, but at least, you know, it'll be the second, third, fourth, something like that, based on all we've had tonight. Could be some winds, straight line damaging winds up around 80. By the way, we have a new severe thunderstorm warning for Logan County and Warren County in Kentucky. That's where one of the tornadoes hit before, hit Bowling Green, based on some of the reports. So it's up and through here, severe thunderstorm warning, but look at all these tornado warnings. Let's do a quick track of that and come back to these tornado warnings. So Russellville, you're next in line. You got hit before. Bowling Green got hit before as well, or that general area. Looks so like they're going to let this one expire too in, here in Kentucky. Yep. What's the timing on this, Melanie? And then let's go back to that tornado in Dixon. Yeah, Dan, it looks like there likely is a tornado that's right there around Burns over in Dixon County. Yep. How, how are we uh, with those How's Thomas's live shot? This thing is all wrapped up. Look at the yeah. look at the amount of quite a down for now. Can we send him to the south side, south of downtown? No, no. I mean, in Dixon, um, keep him away from Burns. I would send him just south of downtown. So, head. What, what is this street right here? What is that street? Let's send him to just south of downtown on that street, Highway 46. 46. Okay, good. Maybe good. Uh, Highway 46 Burns. at Skyline Drive, like a cross street there for him. Good. Um, Burns, tornado over Burns potentially. Um, so we have someone who indicated tor tornado rotation out there. We don't know if it's confirmed yet um, from the weather service. We don't know if they saw strong enough winds, but here's the circulation that's now in Burns. That's how fast it's moving. Kingston Springs, I'm sure you've heard enough um, to want to act. You don't yet have a tornado warning. There's no tornado warning for southern Cheatham County yet, correct? It's just the northern part of the county. Correct. Okay, so, but Kingston Springs, if I were you, if I were at the house, um, I'd be starting to think about mobilizing right now, starting to wake kids up, uh, make sure people are ready to move because these things are just zooming. Look at the latest track. This is for the circulation that's now over Burns. So, Pegram at 306. Linton 310, Newsom 311, Bellevue now at 314. Current time is 254. Forest Hills at 319 in WSMV. Let's see. WSMV is right here. There's a chance this thing hits WSMV or goes right north of WSMV up toward Englewood and Madison. You know, we've got 30 minutes before we'll have to deal with that, but that will be interesting. People ask us all the time, what do we do when a tornado comes to us here? We would, we're all on wireless microphones, we would pack back into the tornado safe area and keep the radar on TV and just keep talking with you. So we're prepared to do that, to stay safe ourselves as this all moves toward Davidson County. Davidson County, severe thunderstorm warning right now. It includes Franklin. It's near Spring Hill and Thompson Station, not quite in that. Pretty much all of Robertson County, almost. Not quite to Sumner, or really just the, the southwestern part of Sumner. It looks like you may be in, in that. That's it. Tornado warning here. Looks like they're going to let that here. one expire right now, too, Dan. So this one will drop off here in just a moment. So this is really the, the, the focus of our tornado warnings right now will be just this one. All the rest have either been canceled or, or expired, so that's good. Good. So southwest Montgomery, if you've been hunkering down, northwestern Dixon County, north of Van Leer, no more tornado warning that you need to worry about. So you can come out of your safe spot. Um, how is this looking for just the tightness and strength? It looks for Reader's Crossroads, Baker, Baker's Works, White Bluff, 
This Burns is White Bluff. It's right in the neighborhood of White Bluff now, around Dixon, or around Burns and White Bluff, I should say. There's Belltown. This is actually a little rotation marker there. This is the border with Cheatham County. So we're getting very near the Cheatham County border. It's about to move through. It's going to be really interesting to see if the Weather Service puts out a tornado warning here shortly for, um, for Cheatham County. Not yet. Don't see it yet. But I'd get ready to move quickly if I'm in Kingston Springs. These reds look like they're a little stronger. It looks like, look at that. Gate to gate. Gate to gate means pixel on pixel. So a red on a green. Mm -hmm. We got some right there. I don't know how strong that is. Um, 62 and well, it's almost 100. Almost 100 miles an hour of rotation moving toward Belltown. Shacklet in Kingston Springs. Tornado warning until 315. And here's the uh, debris, not as well defined as it was over Dixon County. And they're and about to issue it. Sorry, Dan, to cut you off. They're no. about to issue another tornado warning for Cheatham, Davidson, and Williamson with this one. It's, it's coming right that way. Okay. Um, what's, what's debris look like now? I thought this was debris. It's not. Okay. So this, yeah, maybe the debris is still showing mm -hmm. up pretty good between Burns and White Bluff. And then let's, let's Let's encircle this and then let's put up the rotation detector because maybe we're, you know, what happens is this stuff gets lofted in the air. Here we go. Circle this for you real quick. Okay. It gets lofted in the air and it gets blown downstream. If it's, you know, light enough, some of the stuff, it's not just going to be up there for a few seconds, you know, so maybe up there for many minutes. And so um, this eventually will shift downstream of the parent storm. But right here, and as we just heard, they're going to paint a new tornado warning coming up in just seconds and it looks like it will include Nashville for this storm mm -hmm. so this is your early warning Nashville tornado warning coming Kingston Springs like we said before I wouldn't be hanging around I'd be moving to my safe spot right now because you know tornado warnings coming you know the a rotating storm potentially that has already produced a tornado is, is coming your way there's Nashville distance from the circulation 24.5 miles. So if we do the math, if it's moving east northeast at about 60, 60, I mean that's you know piece of cake. 24 minutes. So what time is it now? 2:58. So we're looking at essentially um, you know 2:25 or 3:25, 3:20, whatever, 3:22. There's the updated time. Looks like Forest Hill 3:21, West Nashville 3:21, downtown maybe 3:23, 3:24. But here's the latest time for what could be a tornado coming into Davidson County. Yeah, here it is right here. There it is. We haven't had one in Davidson County since March of 2020. And of course, that was a huge one that formed at John Toon Airport. <laughs> All right, this is some of our There's alerts going off. It's good to know that these work. <laughs> it's working today, at least. It rolled over Germantown, and it continued to press toward the east northeast eventually getting to Wilson County caused all sorts of problems there and it eventually hit Cookville so this is a slightly different path it's not due east it's east northeast but in time it may get downtown and may get Hendersonville may get Gallatin we don't know Nolansville live in Nolansville atop the radar that's working very hard tonight on 4-1 real-time radar. Anytime we're zooming around to the different radars, depending on where the storms are. But right now, there's a perfect time to make sure we're on our own radar. Here's the radar right here. And you can see the sweep that comes out of there as the storms come on in. Live behind me or next to me, that's from atop our transmitting tower. So our hill here in West Nashville is probably 450 feet, I'm guessing, uh, above sea level, and then 1,300 feet higher. So another quarter mile up is the camera that you see. Um, a beautiful view of downtown. Which way are we facing that camera right now? Could we move that toward Nashville West? Could we, could we face it west? Could we face it? <clears throat> Good, it's facing toward Nashville West. While they're getting that, Dan, they're about to issue another tornado warning coming in for Southern Davidson and Williamson pretty soon. So right now it looks like this one is just clipping um, <clears throat> Williamson right just north of Fairview. This one will be coming in probably to include Fairview and possibly Brentwood too. There it is okay. right there. I got it. Interesting. So th this is the one that we've got. Yeah, let's see what it looks like on the other computer and a flash flood warning and too. And flash flood. Hopefully we didn't miss the uh, tornado warning. We don't go to the flooding. There we go. All right. So this is the wind advisory. There we go. And so what we have is the storm getting into the west side of Davidson County. 
red bottom. Here's the brand new tornado warning. So, wow, huge piece of real estate. So Brentwood just got woken up. Downtown Franklin just got woken up. So when the radios are going off, they're working the way they should. Smartphones are going off. The News 4 app is sending out alerts. And we've got people in the digital office sending out pushes on the News 4 um, on your smartphone, essentially. You can see them all right here. Nashville, Bellevue, Brentwood, Cool Springs, Franklin. Of course, we've got back toward Leapers Fork here in this. Forest Hills, Green Hills, Creve Hall. Y you can't afford it, essentially. Antioch, you're in this. All of us in a tornado warning in that zone, in this polygon that goes to almost Laverne, not quite to Laverne. And it's because we may have had a tornado in Dixon. We don't know for sure, but it certainly looked that way on the radar. And look at this rotation on the north side of Kingston Springs. Is this Highway 70? Yeah. Yes. It's going to come right down Highway 70. And you know Highway 70 now, Highway 70 trails almost due east. So this is going to eventually pass north of Highway 70. So it'll be interesting to see what it does around Bellevue. It may pass north of Bellevue, uh, but we'll have to see. You're in that tornado warning. It doesn't matter. 47 and 60. So rotation of about 110. Moving towards Shacklett. This is... Cheatham County, this is Dixon County, and then Williamson County is right over here. Right. We got <coughs> a lot Davidson, of, Davidson, of reports right here. coming in right now, too. So this is this is the rotation we're looking at right between White Bluff and Kingston Springs on 70. But ahead of this, mm -hmm. heading into the Fairview area, wind gusts of over 75 miles an hour. They've got hail coming down now. This is right near Highway 100. Um, this was reported by a storm spotter. Sirens are now going off in Nashville, obviously because of that Davidson County tornado mm -hmm. warning, too. Uh, so if you're being woken up right now, for the tornado sirens. This is actually not in Nashville just yet, but a warning has been issued because what is just west of us is moving extremely fast at about 60 miles an hour. So we'll put a new track on that too, Dan. <clears throat> Melanie, would you broaden out? Yes. Encircle this, back it up an hour. Sure. And, 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 and then draw a circle or 45 minutes. And let's connect the dots and see where in Davidson this thing is going to go, just to make sure we don't mess up the track of this thing. Um, because whether it goes here or here makes a big difference to, you know, tens of thousands of people. So there it is right now. There it is right now. And then we'll back it up to probably, I don't know, 215 or so. Yep. One second. Incredible winds um, with this. Inbounds into this potential tornado, very likely tornado on the ground, 127 miles an hour right now. That's that bright green pixel right there. Well, I'm trying to, Dan, but yeah, it just take, to... take the slider and back it, just slide it right along for back 45 minutes. So it's probably going to do, it's probably going to be something like, it's probably going to be heading toward Inglewood. It's probably going to head toward the north side of downtown and the north side of downtown, essentially Germantown. You know, it may go over, may go over John Toon again, just like March 3rd. We'll see. <clears throat> but that is the movement. It was on the south side of Dixon. Right here, Southern Cheatham, next in line is the north side yep. of downtown in time. Very interesting path here. Now, on the chat, we just saw that the, the inbounds are 127 miles an hour. Let's query this again sure. and see. It looks like we just got a brand new picture. Um, <clears throat> you know, Dan, it's yeah. very, very reminiscent of that, what you were just saying, the, the March tornado started off kind of in the same general area, too, so. It was a supercell that was back, you know, in West Tennessee. Remember that along the Tennessee River? And mm -hmm. then, yeah, then, then it touched down at John Toon. What is that collective rotation right there? Just north of Highway 70. So we're seeing about a buck 20, 120 miles an hour, really tight rotation in a rural part of Cheatham County, but this house is all through these areas. So, you know, they've got to be in their safe spot. Let's check on the, um, the tornado tips again, too. There's debris. Oh, no, it wasn't, uh, that's full on real-time radar. So you want to make sure everybody getting awoken right now, you've got to get to your lowest interior room. Hopefully you've already identified that, but there's a lot of new people to town, and so that's going to be a basement if you have one. Most people don't. Um, so a bathroom or closet, no windows, the smallest room you can find. The, put as many walls between you and the outdoors as you can. Protect your body and your head from flying debris. And so if you have a helmet, some people like to drive motorcycles. If you don't have motorcycles, maybe you have bikes in the garage. You probably have helmets in the house. Those will work to protect your head. 
Protect your body with pillows and blankets and abandoned cars and mobile homes. If a tornado is coming in, you don't want to be in a car or mobile home. Look at that coming on in. Nolansville behind me, that live camera. So here's that cell. Some of the rain now getting into. This is the rain, the leading edge of the rain. That's what's generating these damaging wind gusts. Gusted to 75, we just heard a moment ago in Fairview. So as the rain comes in, the wind is probably really going to pick up. Look at that. Look at that rotation right there. Is this a new area of rotation? Do we have two tornadoes in progress right here? We've got the stronger one here, yeah. but that hook that just formed mm -hmm. over Linton and that moved over Fairview just a moment ago. And that's the where we have a bunch of power <coughs> outages too. In Fairview? In Fairview. There could be another circulation, and that's why we've got a number of tornado warnings that gets toward Green Hills. It looked really strong or sharp on the reflectivity less so on this rotation detector but you can see certainly some rotation again greens toward the radar reds away from the radar circulation here circulation here there's oh, nashville this. man that debris is holding on <clears throat> debris detector we look for rotation and then some cool colors right next to one another right over one another it's probably debris lofted in the air from that tornado still in progress dixon county cheatham county i should say just north of Kingston Springs. Gotcha. All right. Lisa. That's several times that we've seen that tonight, too, Dan. We've been watching that very, very closely. So it's been very, very interesting. And, you know, I think everybody's got their phones going off and their automatic alerts going off as well as this storm is starting to move into the Nashville area right now. And that's what's been happening to us here as well. The same thing that's going on with folks. So no doubt a lot of folks are waking up in Nashville to see what's going on here. And we've been tracking this line of storms all the way from the west. It's stretching right down through here, all the way back down to Linden. And right now a tornado warning, including parts of Davidson County and several areas of rotation along this line right now. This tornado warning in effect until 3.30. Got a couple of notches that are very evident right now on our forewarned real-time radar. We find one of those right here. You can see the notch through here. And this is the rotation detector. It gives us an idea of where we got that circulation. Dan's been pointing that out so we can get a view here. Taking this one, and you see those reds and greens together. That's when we see the winds blowing toward and away from the radar site. And that's where we look for those winds and find that circulation as it's moving off towards the northeast right now. And we do that storm track for you one more time and it just gives you an idea of where it's going to be headed so you can know as you're sitting there at home how long it's going to take it to get to you. Now we're at 310 right now. That's our actual time. So it's going to be moving into West Nashville. That is where our Channel 4 studio is located. It'll be over around 321. Jordonia at 321. Over to West Nashville right around 322. Coming into TSU around 323 as well um, as well in Bordeaux. And then coming right on into White's Creek. Uh, if you're waking up in Nashville, 325 is the time we're expecting it to move through the city. Hume Fogg High School downtown at around 326 and over to White's Creek High School around 326 in Avondale at that around 326 as well. All right, so Melanie, we can uh, take a look right here. And over my shoulder, you're seeing Bellevue. You can see that Sawyer Brown Road. We'll take a closer look at that rotation a second that we were looking at just a moment ago. Yeah, let's let's take a look at the, what kind of winds we're talking about here. Um, and Dan was talking about gate to gate. We definitely are seeing our reds and greens together here. We're talking 35, 44. So still pretty strong wind that is showing up with this storm here as it's rotating and moving through, passing towards the east, northeast. And, you know, we can get a look at some of the roads here and give you a better idea of where this exactly is located around Sam Creek Road over to Apache Trail, Indian Spring Road. If you know where we're talking about, those are the areas that this rotation is located in right now. And just want you to know that this is your time. Uh, make sure you are in your safe place if you're in this general vicinity. This is Shacklett, there's Griffin Town, and then of course here is Scottsboro. If you're in those communities, uh, it's now the time. And hope you stay there for a little while longer. And anyone out ahead of this over into Jordonia, and of course here in West Nashville, over in Whites Creek. You know, if, if you know somebody in some of these areas, please go on and give them a call and make sure they are up 
up as well because now is the time to act. These are fast moving storms. We want to get to that safe place very, very quickly. So we took a look at one of those areas of rotation. Here is another that is right here uh, down a little farther to the south. This is Philstone Farms and the Grassland community here. Uh, so these spots are also under the gun now as this storm is moving off towards the northeast right now. So you too need to be in that safe spot. Putting that reflectivity back on right now and we can get a look here of where the where the rain extends to and you can see it right through here. So we've got folks out ahead of this. If you're in Brentwood, um, stretching right on up to around Inglewood and even farther out to Mount Juliet and Antioch, make sure you too are up and paying attention to what's going on because this storm is going to be moving to you very, very quickly. Some things you can do ahead of time, get that safe spot ready to go. And we're talking about putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Go to the lowest interior room. You want to protect your head from flying debris. Use some pillows, blankets, and also a helmet. And, you know, we don't want folks to be in a mobile home or in a car this evening. So uh, take those precautions. You know, one of the best things you can use is a full face uh, motorcycle helmet or any helmet will do that you have right there at home. I always like to think of it as getting yourself almost in a fort, trying to protect yourself from that flying debris. And speaking of that, let's go back to our radar. And uh, we've got a, a flying debris detector, so to speak. We can help us identify where we could have uh, some of that being lofted into the air. And we've had many reports a possibility of some circulation and possible tornado around Kingston Springs. And right through here, we're seeing some of that bright uh, color that we see indicating the possibility of some of that debris being lofted. Because what happens in a tornado, you get that rotation. And I like to think of it as that when I talk to kids about being a vacuum cleaner, it's going to suck things up inside of it, but doesn't have a bag. So it's going to loft some of that stuff into the air. And that's what we're detecting here. Another indicator that we are seeing uh, some of that flying debris out there right now. And to give you an idea where those tornado warnings are located, and you guys can help me out with this on some of the timing and some of the counties. Um, of course, Davidson County included in this. And Dan, who else would we have included in this particular warning? They were watching. This one here, this is Williamson County, uh, Davidson County, Cheatham County, and it, they've already expired the one for Dixon County. So that one off to your yeah. left, Lisa, that's going to yeah. be uh, gone out of here pretty soon. They're, they're pretty much in the clear of this storm. This one's Davidson, Williamson, Cheatham, and that's it. And a good time to remind folks that if you are in Charlotte and Dixon, any of those areas, you can go on and head to... Um, to back to bed actually because this storm has passed you by so you are in the clear but this storm right now is moving into Davidson County and we can get another view here we got a lot of rain coming down so you can see the flash flood uh, warning that has been issued all across here as well so we we go from there to let's get on down and there we go our rotation detector picking up right now on where we are seeing uh, some of that circulation and this is our warning ring anytime you see this warning ring this is showing us that uh, we likely are getting circulation there and that is also what we're seeing right there on the rotation director um, detector as well We've got a couple of cameras up and take a look at what we're looking at here and what what cameras are we looking at right now can you tell us from back all right, so the Bellevue and then our tower cam, uh, looking at a lot of rain coming down with that. You can see very evidently on both of those cameras right now. But zoom on down to Nashville. Let's get a look and, and see exactly what's happening right here in the city. Because I know a lot of folks are hearing this, hearing the howling of the wind as we have been all night long. And now it's moving right here into Nashville. Uh, so we can take a closer look there. Uh, so heads up, make sure you are ready to go as the circulation is just off to the west of you. So we want to go over that once again, because I know as this is coming through, I uh, want to make sure you know exactly what's going on right now. So we get a latest storm track on this as it moves off towards the northeast. And we're probably going to have to take this full again so folks at home can read some of these numbers along with us and see exactly where they're, the storm hey, is Lisa, going. Hey, Lisa, can I interject for a second? Absolutely. Can, can we get the director in the back to pull up the live camera that essentially shoots past Charlotte? and um in 40. so yeah. it's it's how we caught it's actually in an area that can shoot essentially right where this thing is right now on the west side of nashville i don't know what mile marker it is it's probably i don't know melanie do you know what what it is just east of white bridge road the shit at 46 i-40 right right and 46 exit 205 so, yeah like i-40 and 46 something like that if that, that might be helpful 
All right, All right, go ahead. And that Sorry. was our, our camera here, right? Our tower camera that got that. It looks over like McCabe and that, that area. No, but we could be using that right now, too. What does that show looking up toward the West Northwest? All right, While we're taking track. a look at that camera, let's go on and run down this track. This storm moving into Jordonia at 320, into Wrights Creek at uh, Whites Creek at 324, continuing over to Davidson County Academy around 327, and then over to Hunters Lane at right around 328, the high school there. So make sure you are headed to your safe place. Uh, you've got a few minutes before the storm makes its way to you. 317 is the estimated arrival time there. Um, now that's one of the areas of circulation there. That we're watching and we've got another that we're keeping our eye on as well as we've got uh, the one that we just took a look at and then this one actually um, is going to be coming right on into the Nashville area and looks like it's going to be making its way around Bell's Bend around that area towards the airport over at John Toon within the next 10 minutes. So if you're if you know exactly where that area is, that's where this storm is headed to right through here. And I know we are kind of on the flight path of that right here in West Nashville. A lot of those planes coming out of there, which that is one of the areas that um, back in March did sustain sustain some damage when that storm came through. Let's take a peek here and we've got a, a new, it looks like an update with this latest rotation here and seeing those winds pick up a little bit from where they were just a little while ago. So well over 100 mile per hour winds showing with this as a rotation continues to move on through headed off towards the east right now as uh, we can check it out there. You see that rotation there with these storms as they move away from the radar site and towards the radar site. That's indicating where we are looking at that storm. If we checked our, our latest uh, debris detector, which is exactly what I was going <coughs> to say, to see if we find anything, and don't see anything exactly there. That Not easy to pick out with that one. It's not correlating quite as well. Right. But a little bit as Dan circled right through there. So yeah, just not as easy, not those brighter blues that we normally see when we're looking for those um, with our, along with exactly where the rotation is located. But I know this is a lot of people's minds getting up uh, this late night, so indicative of what happened uh, back earlier, as we remember back to um, 2020 when we had that storm come through and just how frightening that is to wake up to this storm. So I want to make sure you are up and at them and in your safe spot tonight as the storms are working across the area. But you can see it right in here. That's where that circulation is from Scottsboro over to Jordonia. And this will be our likely tornado if we do have one right in here with showing that signs of, of some rotation taking place and then continuing to move on over to Bordeaux. Dan? So we get uh, power flashes north of Franklin, reports of that in the last uh, few minutes. And it, we, we don't know what, what that could be associated with other than probably straight line damaging wind. But Williamson County, you are under a tornado warning. This looks like what we saw the other day. These bands of tremendously heavy rain. So even if you don't get a tornado down here, you're just going to have ferocious winds. Let's just do a quick storm track and I will come back to that tornado warning for downtown Nashville. Um, this stuff is just flying along this morning at about uh, 65, 70. The rain just stopped for the most part, the real heavy stuff, in West Nashville at WSMV. There's WSMV, so you can see it moving out. But damaging winds moving in quickly. Crockett Park, 323. Rain Tree Forest in Brentwood, 325. Governor's Club, same time. Owl Creek on the way to Nolansville, 326. Nashboro Village at 326 as well. Most dangerous storm on the radar right now is where we have this rotation. Tornado warning continues. We are looking for, we're looking for debris with this and we're not seeing clear signs, but you're still gonna be very hunkered down. Parkwood Estates, Haysboro, Madison, that's a big community, Madison, right on the interstate there, and then eventually up toward Hendersonville. That's Look at that rain along. coming down. You can even see on the cameras there, Dan, just incredible. Yeah. So we've this got uh, new severe thunderstorm warning. Where's okay? So they've extended that out. So what that that just goes in line with what we just said, and that is essentially even if you don't get a tornado, you'll probably have some damaging winds. You might lose power. Um, it's just possible with that until four o'clock. Hendersonville, Gallatin, you're in this Portland. So most of Sumner County, most of Wilson County, 
So you can see impacted by that Mount Juliet, Noreen, Laverne, Smyrna, Walter Hill, Spring Hill, and Columbia. A huge swath of the mid-state right now. Severe thunderstorm warning up toward Franklin, Kentucky, and Bowling Green. You're in that too. But again, we've got to get back to this tornado warning in downtown Nashville. And look at that indentation that just developed, Lisa. That's really clear. Yeah, right through here. Yeah, Antioch. Yeah, it looks like, um, Dan, also that there's going to be a new tornado warning issued, too, because of that. So we'll see that extending out and really encompassing all of Davidson County at this point. Uh, so you showed it there on the reflectivity. So we take a look at it. We've got this, the most powerful one, right up here around Jordonia as it's moving off towards the east. And then a secondary one right through here that will have us seeing another extension of that tornado warning for other parts of Davidson County. Let's get a little closer to this one and, and kind of interrogate that a little bit. That's that new warning coming out right through there. Um, so we take a look at the new one. We can pull down a little bit quicker and I hear this. I'm sure you're hearing this at home too. Your um, WIA alert, <coughs> which is your weather alerts coming there across your phone. And here it is around Paragon Mills, Nippers Corner, right through here, just off to the north of Brentwood. And when we see this, these are your winds circulating around, and that's going to be likely where that likely where that tornado is. And that's um, also very near the Creve Hall area too, and Tusculum. And any of these locations, boy, let's go on and head to that safe place as quickly as you can. This tornado warning in effect until 3:30 a.m. and you know, this storm is moving so quickly, not much of a heads up here as they move on by. So make sure that you're taking these precautions very, very quickly. I'm headed over towards Antioch and then continuing towards Nashboro Village as well as it's marching on through. I think that's mine going off now, and that's prompted this tornado warning. Do we see any debris signatures yet with either of these rotations, Dan, as they're coming across? You know, Lisa, we've got tremendous... This doesn't just show debris, it'll just show other things blowing up in yeah. the air in advance. And so this essentially could be just from straight line damaging wind kicking up a lot of dust. And we don't know um, because it's ahead of all the rain. Uh, maybe some residual leaves getting lofted in the air. It's fall. Some people haven't cleaned up their, yeah. their yards yet. That's what that could be. And the Weather Service is saying there could be straight line damaging winds around 100 with some of these, uh, some of these pockets of the line. So the outer, the front edge... Um, even if you're not in a tornado warning, there just could be phenomenal wind damage along some of this. So um, now that up in the Sumner County, that tornado warning, how new is this until 4 o'clock? Is this brand new? Yeah, just coming out. Okay, so that's even Gallatin and Hendersonville right now. So, right so now, the Weather Service, yeah, is continuing that northern one, the northern storm tornado warning. And let's check on that rotation. And then we have that southern ones too. You can see it around Englewood, Madison. Yeah. Right in through here, pretty easy to pick that one out. Got that one little green area and over to the red coming into Inglewood right now. So that's gonna extend it for a whole new community right up here. Um, even though those storms seem to be moving a little bit um, more towards the east right now, could um, get a storm track on that latest warning that has been issued real quickly and, and give some folks some heads up here as this one is moving on towards the East northeast right now, a little more easterly it seems than than northeast. Just from that little last blast, is that an update for us? A little harder to pick out on that last one, but this one is moving right there towards the northeast. Uh, you can see headed to Madison at 3:29, and then over to around Lakewood around 3:33, 3:35, and Hendersonville High School, and then continuing over to Greenlawn right around 3:37. Don't want to forget Hendersonville in there at 3:35 for you, and continuing over to Station Camp right around 3:40, and Gallatin High School at 3:45. So that's going to give you you know just a little bit of time there, about 15. 20 minutes to find your safe spot there. Head with everything you're going to need, which is going to be your your phone right there in your hand because you can actually watch our coverage. We're streaming it live, so you can check out what's going with us, even in your safe spot there in the closet in the bathroom with uh, that right there in your hand. Make sure you've got your blankets, your helmets, all those things to keep you safer as this storm moves on by. And we've got here our, our next storm that we're watching, and this one is right there at Ezo Harding and continuing to move over to Wilson Central High School around 341 and to Lebanon right around 347. Continuing right on over to folks there at Hunters Point around 353. Noreen, I skipped you there at 349. Even the Wilson County Fairgrounds about 10 before the hour. Dan?
All right, Lisa, we have a, an update on the power situation in Davidson County. Let's get that up if we can. This is the power outage map uh, for the mid-state, and it shows about 4,000 people without power now in Davidson County. Is that correct, Michael? Davidson alone. Got it. And so uh, mainly in the southwest side, and I'm telling you right now, it's going to grow like crazy because of this batch right in through here. Now, we've been using 4-1 real-time radar all night. Um, we may flip back and forth with the Nashville radar because the storms are right over the radar here in a couple of minutes. And I just want to show you, and so we may start to lose a little signal for a moment. I want to show you that all that purple and black um, that's just going to bring all that wind energy down to the ground. Where you have that really fine edge, the wind is going to kick up very fast. So if you're in Antioch, Nashboro Village, Donaldson, Nolensville, if the wind hasn't reached you yet, it's about to. Lad Park, that's part of Franklin. And then let's zoom out just a little bit. Let me clear that off and go farther down the line. It looks like it's a little weaker what's going to move into Arrington. There's Arrington, there's Almaville. Thompson Station looks like a strong cell, but there's a little void here up toward Arrington. But heads up from Cool Springs and Franklin all the way through Donaldson. Tremendous wind. Laverne, Smyrna, it's coming your way. It's going to blow right over the lake. It'll be interesting. This is going to hit the airport. It is going to be very interesting to see how much wind um, we, we register at the airport um, as all this moves along. But look at that hook right along 41 and so that's gonna that could be where a tornado is in progress now we don't have debris with that per se but it's gonna go right into Wilson County here shortly Lebanon High School 347 Wilson Central High School before that at 342 in Gladeville downtown Lebanon 349 potential tornado be in your safe spot Noreen 350 Tucker's Crossroads at 355 Watertown 356 and Bellwood at 358. And so this, this front band of storms is the main event. Once it goes by, your chance of severe weather goes down hugely and may be done for the night. We're not for sure of that just because the cold front is way back to the west, but it's gonna be really hard for the atmosphere to recover after this. And so some good news there. In terms of that tornado signature that was on the north side of town, it's hard to find right now. It prompted that new tornado warning. It could be up around Madison. You know, it looks like there is some rotation still holding on there. We've got some outbounds, some inbounds, but it's sort of, um, it's sort of tough to, to pick out. Right in through there, possibly. So we zoom back down around Madison right now, Inglewood, and it's gonna go right toward Old Hickory Lake, essentially. Um, right toward Hendersonville, there's Lakeside Park. Delray Park Estates, Cherokee Woods, Cumberland Hills, and so be in your safe spot. In terms of tornado warnings, they're all clustered around Nashville right now, mm -hmm. right in the zone. Lisa. Yeah, and, and look at this. I mean, Dan, I know you've noticed this, and Melanie, look, we've got this huge area that's blocked off under a severe thunderstorm warning, and then right here in the middle of it, as you mentioned, all clustered uh, from Franklin up through Nashville and over to Gallatin. Now, we let you know that there is no con confirmation of any tornado right now. We had earlier, we pretty much knew when that first track was going through across parts of Kentucky. You can see it. We were getting reports all along, uh, just a very significant tornado, but not not the case with this one, a little bit different here um, with this particular system. This was a report earlier of trees down around Lobelville as uh, this storm, this particular storm has come through, but no reports of any tornado that we've been tracking like we had earlier. But let's do dive down and, and once again show you this, really starting to bow out here uh, quite a bit, but you can still see those notches right through here where likely that tornado has been. And the good news here, if you're in downtown, if you're in West Nashville or you're in Jordonia, this thing is moving so fast that the worst part of the storm has already passed you by. Looks like we got a new severe thunderstorm uh, warning that has been issued there. But this is um, now where we're seeing it out ahead of this storm. And so we kind of give you a heads up if you're off to the east there of downtown Nashville, uh, likely that storm is going to be coming your direction next. Well, we know it is for sure as this part of the storm continues to move on by and has moved out of the downtown area. And you can see that bow right through there. So we're looking at this new severe thunderstorm warning that I believe is the one that you see here. That's right. Yep. So pushing it out a little bit farther to the east than what we had just 
just a bit ago as this is such a quick moving storm and I think it's going to be out of here maybe even before we get to sunrise at least this batch of storms and then of course we've still got some rain on the back side of this but let's uh, take a closer look kind of interrogate this storm through Dashville and see what we um, can find here. We've got any new updates on here, new debris signatures, or perhaps even uh, take a look at some of the rotation that's taking place. The tornado warning itself in effect, this uh, top one up here in effect until 4 a.m. This one is the one that does include parts of Sumner County and looks as though we may be issuing a new one for, ah, for a little farther down to the <coughs> south. That's gonna be back over in West Tennessee. Is that, is that what I'm seeing there over yes. in Hardin and McNary County? I was noticing they had quite a bit. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. But here's one of the notches that we're seeing. And we've switched over right now to um, OHX, which is the Nashville radar here. And you can see this circle is what we call the cone of silence. So right on top of the radar, you don't get any data, as you can see here. But we definitely had that notch a little farther down to the south. And we had some rotation a little bit earlier on the back side of that storm. And we still have that. That's now east of Madison right now. And you can see it right through here. Um, give a good indication of where that rotation is taking place. All right, we find this is the one that we were talking about a second ago that just popped up, McNary County and also into Hardin County. Hardin County is Savannah right through here. And this is a brand new tornado warning just issued um, as this storm has developed more. You can see a couple little notches in that. And checking that rotation direct detector, we've headed back up. I know we're bouncing around a little yeah. bit, but it looks like we've got um, <coughs> new rotation perhaps developing uh, near near BNA, so near the airport along I-40. We just got that message in, and we want to take a look at that and see if we can find that. This is Hermitage. There's Donaldson, so the airport right in through here with a possible rotation that is developed and kind of looking for that, see what we're seeing here. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you the airport as soon as I, uh, it's right, it's Briley, so it's gotta be right in this general area right yeah. around here, which is where we've got that rotation. And that is on um, the airport camera that we're seeing on that top box there. Good. We're looking um, towards downtown right now. So we've got a little rotation out towards the airport. Yeah. And possibly could be can't be too far there from Donaldson. Yep. I know when you got so much radar imagery on here, sometimes it's hard to find some of these spots unless you dive way on down. Yeah, it's just south of the interstate, so it's yeah. right in this neck of the woods, right next to the lake. All right. So a little rotation perhaps taking place there. And possibility of a couple of tornadoes, it looks like. Some some of our friends out at the National Weather Service feed us notes um, to tell us what they're seeing along with what we're seeing here on our own radar. And um, one of those could be just north of Lakewood, which we saw that a second ago, and one in Donaldson. So, and so just to show you where those are, because a lot of people are new to town, one Absolutely. could be right here, and the other one could be right essentially around right here not far from one another yeah M maybe even a little east of there over here so. so those are the two hot spots right now maybe take a closer look at both of those sure and see if we can let folks know a little more of what's going on it says the airport here gusted we headwind go. gust yeah up to what 78 miles an hour that's right so that's one of the highest i mean i haven't seen anything higher since i've been here and dan i, I don't think we've seen no. together we haven't seen anything that high um, it's pretty pretty high wind showing up with this storm. Lisa, let me let notch. me catch this new tornado warning before right. you uh, continue on that. Let's just check that. All righty. Okay, so that's just an, an extension Trousdale now, Macon, okay. Smith. So this is the one from Sumner County, and now it's folks there in Hartsville right. included in that warning, and Hunter's Point in there as well. There you go. All right, so back to the areas of rotation that we were looking um, for over in Davidson County in Nashville. We want to get down and take a closer look at both of those and see the wind speeds on them and uh, let's see exactly where they are. And there's the one in Hendersonville. You can see just south of Hendersonville and, of course, prompting this new warning that we're seeing right now. And then the second one is showing up actually a little bit farther off to the east. It's tough. It's a little more ill-defined. Yes, so we'll just is. say it's probably on the Wilson County line now. Yeah. So right in through here, uh, right near the interstate. I mean, they're so quick moving. Right when we identify yep. them, we get a new scan and it pushes them a little farther off to the east. So if you're in this area, if you're in Mount Juliet, we are definitely seeing storms that are, are coming your way. So I'm sorry, what was that one more time? 
Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Our producer in identifying the, the cameras that you see here are <coughs> around Mount Juliet right there. And then, of course, if close to that, where we're seeing that rotation, that's a little harder to find right through there. And then another. Let's go to the, um, let's go to the Vietnam vets cameras in Hendersonville. There could be a tornado in Hendersonville right now. And so can we do that? Can we pull up any of the T dots? Good. And so I don't know that they'll show the one at like maybe Gallatin Pike. I don't know. They may be really facing along and parallel to the road, um, but it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see what we see in Hendersonville because there could be a tornado right now around Maple Row Estates, Point of View, Indian Forest, Cumberland Hills, not far from Saunders Ferry Road. <clears throat> and so if you're familiar with that area, and I'm certainly familiar with Saunders Ferry Road uh, because I've traveled it many times, um, just a heads up. It sort of sticks out like a sore thumb, the little pocket of red and green right in here. So just north of Old Hickory, where the radar is. And we're using this radar of the weather service right now because um, ours is covered up in rain, but just a few minutes from now, uh, the rain fade's gonna stop. So, okay, so we have Vietnam vets cameras right there. And so they're not showing a whole lot other than some flashes of lightning, um, some people traveling. You know, it's really tough to decipher sometimes whether it's lightning or a power flash. That looks like nearly continuous lightning to me, though, um, reflecting off the clouds. So the bottom one, Vietnam Vets, pretty much at Gallatin Pike. And then the top one, Vietnam Vets, essentially at New Shackle Island. So potential tornado now in Hendersonville. And now, again, we may have a tornado moving into Mount Juliet. Look at that rotation. This is even more intense. So west side of Mount Juliet, if you're in Mount Juliet, got to be in your safe spot. Collectively, 140 miles an hour of rotation. And it may be right here around Jackson Hollow, Lebanon Dirt Road, old Lebanon Dirt Road, just north of I-40. Here's I-40 right here. Here's I-40 right here. And this could be another tornado developing or in progress. Um, there's a new picture, and it looks pretty certain that that's the area to focus on. Denny Hills, so moving toward Beckwith. Here's Denny Hills. Here are the inbounds. Here are the outbounds. So here's downtown Mount Juliet. Um, you know, you get some big shopping centers in there. Here's Highway 70. So this is just along Highway 70 or just south. And then here's I-40, potential tornado in progress, Mount Juliet. Beckwith, Martha, Cairo Bend or Cairo Bend, Silver Springs, and Leeville, all smaller communities east of Mount Juliet could be coming your way. You've got to be in your safe spot just south of Highway 70. There's Highway 70 right there. There's State Route 171. Woodridge Place, Curd Road. If you're in your safe spot and you don't have a smartphone, some people don't, and they can't watch this on the News 4 app, crank up the TV before going there and you'll hear us. We're not going to leave you till, till, till this is over. We do want to say in terms of tornado warnings, the threat has left Davidson. So you're in the clear and the threat for tornado has left uh, Williamson. Take a look at that. You still have a strong cell down on the northeast side of Nolansville, but the threat for circulation is spot Franklin, Cool Springs, all that. Um, However, that does not mean the lightning is done. We just heard a big, a big thunder it's over, amazing. overhead here. Amazing the computers keep working for us. Yes. So we're back toward Henderson, to Lisa. This could be a circulation right here. It's, it's possible. Yeah. It's it's not nearly as clear as the Mount Juliet. I think Mount Juliet deserves even more attention right now. It's the southern one. There are really multiple tornadoes going on right now, or at least potential tornadoes out there. Let's look at the debris. I mean, so this is potential debris. Let, let me encircle the rotation spots. And the one on Mount Juliet's very clear. So this is probably a tornado in progress right now because of the debris. You see that little pocket of... Yeah. Uh, no. Now it's shifted. Let me clear this. That's probably debris around Denny Hills and Creek Mott right here. So we're looking on the north side of Mount Juliet, right on Highway 70. Mm -hmm. And there's that. There's debris. 
and there's the rotation in that same spot. Now, in terms of what we're seeing up in Hendersonville, this could be debris. A little farther north right here. I don't know for sure. I don't see any very clear rotation on rotation detector there. Let's take a look at this one. Wow, look at this. So, Lisa, this is actually showing still very strong rotation on our second rotation detector. So that yeah, it could really be is. one in progress. I mean, that was very similar to what we saw earlier tonight. Very large okay. compared to what we normally see. And likely can see a swath through there as it's continued to move across. And that would be right over the lake. That would yeah. be right over the lake now. And when we had the tornadoes on Monday, early Monday morning, there was a, a boat on the Ohio River. And the captain of the boat said he saw the tornado cross the river and it blew over his mast on his ship. Um, oh, wow. That's how close he was. It didn't capsize his vehicle or his uh, boat, pardon me. But, um, yeah, that happened Monday morning. We know there are, there are definitely a, a lot of folks that live out there in that area all, all around that lake. So um, hope that folks are, are heeding this warning tonight. Heads up for you if you're in those locations and, you know, make sure you're in your safe spot. And we're talking about, once again, I know there's a lot to remember there, but just make sure that you've got the gang all together and headed down to the lowest level of your home. Your basement is perfect. Protecting that head from that flying debris. We've been showing that debris detector all night long. So make sure that you're um, putting in pillows and blankets and even a full frontal Helmet, no kidding, for your motorcycle is very, very helpful there. Or just the, get the kids bicycle helmets on them if you've got time to do that. Don't wait to waste time finding things, but also take your phone along with you if you can. And Dan mentioned, turn the TV up loud if you need to, just so you can hear us and we can let you know when the storm has passed you by. And I tell you, Dan, it doesn't take long for these storms to pass folks by because they are moving so quickly tonight from one part of the mid-state all the way to the other. We're talking moving around 60 and even some instances 70 miles an hour fast moving storms tonight so at this point we're seeing fewer tornado warnings in effect We've got the one that is right through here but plenty of severe thunderstorm warnings tonight indicating the high winds and again we've got this uh, tornado warning that is across to the southwest includes montgomery county i shouldn't say montgomery i should say mcnary county and also for hardin county tonight a lot of lightning down here in this corner but uh, this storm is moving on towards the east and do we look for any rotation here and i believe we'd find it right over here off to the east perhaps of savannah at this hour as this storm is moving on <coughs> towards the northeast pretty quickly once again as those other storms have been moving as well and we slide along and just can see all of this right through here just so much activity as we march right through to Hohen Wall where it continues to come down very heavily there and straight on over to Centerville and then headed into Spring Hill Two, no warnings other than your severe thunderstorm warning, no tornado warnings, but severe thunderstorm warning remains in effect all the way up to Franklin and then circling back around over to Smyrna. But you look back to Pegram, back to Nashville, you're all clear now in terms of severe storms. Back to Dixon as well, up to Madison and Hendersonville. The storm is by you now, but out ahead over here, we still have some folks that are remaining under that tornado warning. And you can see the extension that goes until 415 with this part of the storm moving on towards the northeast. So we've still got a ways to go, but still it's moving very, very quickly right now. This is that uh, tornado warning that Dan is pointing out right here. As we're looking at the circulation, looking for that circulation associated with that storm and all that moving toward the northeast. Dan? All right, Lisa, so maybe the front edge of this uh, is where we need to focus most on right now. It's tough based on what we're seeing right now. It's just a sea of reds and greens, and there's no really intense rotation that sticks out like a sore thumb in the Wilson County area right now. Here's the reflectivity on forward real-time radar, and it shows a couple of different interesting areas. The most interesting looking one, at least from this perspective, is here, but it's a little removed from where we saw the rotation before, which would by now be up in this area right in through here. So let's just take a look at the rotation detector, and there may still be possibly between Mount Juliet and Hunter's Point some sort of rotation trying to hang on out there right now, but it's not as intense as it was before. We check on debris detector, and there's no very obvious area that matches up with that rotation in terms of debris. So for the time being, things might be 
uh, becoming a little more well behaved over into Wilson County. Now up into Sumner County, we look at rotation and there's still some sort of rotation um, at least showing up north of Gallatin. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's the same little complex that we saw before. So we'll go back. That's a different little oh. burst of rotation. You can see it passing south of Cottontown, yeah, but right something we'll have to watch, yeah. Looks like there's going to be a new warning out on that too, Dan, um, for oh, really? Sumner and Macon County and Trousdale County for this little rotation that we're seeing here that moves into those particular areas right now. So maybe take a closer look at that and it'll be a, a few seconds, I'm sure, before it comes out. Right in through there. And that's gonna be east of Cottonwood as we see it. A little Cotton closer Town. look. Yes, yeah, thank you. Cotton yeah. Town. Eyes are getting getting a little weary this time of the evening. <laughs> and okay. now it's headed towards or I should say morning now. That's headed towards Beth Page right now. And so that's gonna make it come across 31E, moving on towards the northeast. And there is um, that new tornado warning just came out that we were just talking about. So that's going to include folks up here in Lafayette, and that'll catch you in the Hermitage Springs area too. So if you're in these areas, Lafayette, time to go on and make those plans. You got a little bit of time here before the storm makes it to you. So go on and head into your safe place as well. We can actually get a track. So you'll give you some timing up here for you folks up towards the north right now with the storm moving off towards the northeast and, and making its way towards um, folks there in some of these communities that are a little bit farther off to the east, like the we'll Beth Page community. And it's almost it's almost um, right there at you in Beth Page as it moves northeastward. Fast movers tonight around 62 miles per hour, headed to Westmoreland around 357, over to Lafayette at 406, and then Macon County High School at 408, and then over the Holland community uh, as well around 410, and bound Pumpkin Town at 414. So you got the estimated arrival times, so this is your heads up, get onto those safe places, and uh, this storm will be moving back by you very quickly. As a matter of fact, it's by you over in Greenbrier and up to Franklin and Portland. You are just about out of it right now as the storm is moving towards the east and of course uh, Hendersonville down through Nashville a heads up that you are fine uh, the worst of the storm has passed you by and and there we were talking about this the front itself has not come through yet but the likelihood is diminishing because we worked over the atmosphere quite a bit with the thunderstorms that we've seen tonight and this new severe thunderstorm warning this one takes us back up to Kentucky now so this time it looks like folks that are a little bit farther to the east here um, right around let's see up towards up towards 65 and 68 right through there well east of Bowling Green is in in the, uh, under the gun for this next round of storms that's going to be moving on towards the east and eventually headed towards Burksville and Tompkinsville, also included in that worn area. But a lot of rain through there. You can see that flash flood watch that's still in effect there, too. But estimated arrival time on some of these spots right around Oak Forest at 358 to Holland at 4 o'clock and then over to Glasgow at 403 as these storms continue to move towards the east. So we've got a new severe thunderstorm warning there, still hanging on to the tornado warnings that we have, including parts of Sumner and also Macon County. And then right over here around Hartsville, a new severe thunderstorm warning has just been issued. And that, um, that rotation there that Dan was pointing out. And we're looking at folks farther down to the south this go around. And that is going to be for Clifton and also for Homewald. Uh, folks in those areas, you are going to see some really strong winds, a lot of lightning out there, and plenty of rain that is coming through as well. All right, so we put it all back together and checking one more time exactly where we have these warnings. Here's our tornado warnings off to the north. <coughs> We've got down to the south and right in between just a host of severe thunderstorm warnings. But notice it's just all rain on the back side of all of that. And so things have calmed down considerably for you there. Dan? All right, Lisa, we have some damage to show people this uh, in Kingston Springs. So I think we have a live crew there. And this is going to show where what was probably a tornado in Dixon passed into Cheatham County and got Kingston Springs. We don't know if this is tornado damage because a lot of areas had severe winds. And I'm talking winds 60, 70, 80. We may have had some 90 mile per hour wind gusts. The atmosphere was primed for that tonight, but obviously it got hold of a tree here. And remember that this tree has no leaves and it didn't when it was blown down. So to blow down, assuming it's healthy, a healthy tree with no leaves, that's crazy. 
I mean, think about it. There's no wind socks to catch all that momentum. And this is happening live right now. Mm -hmm. Mobile four is out there. And that's, is it another? That's a large a, tree, Dan. Look at that big one. Big tree. So you it know. does take quite a wind for that. Have we heard from who is out there right now the scope of the damage, whether it's one isolated tree or is he in an area that's, or she, it's extensive damage. This is probably, um, this could be a tornado then. Um, another warning came in, by the way. Yeah, speaking, um, speaking of tornado, it looks like we may very well have a, a possible tornado around Beth Page right now in Sumner County. Also, footnote to all that, so that the, the storms came through Davidson. We don't know what kind of damage was done in Davidson, but we do know that now 9,000 people have no power. Wow. And that number is going to keep going up all across Antioch, down into the east side of Franklin, Nolansville. More and more people are going to say, hey, we don't have power. It's going to be a little while. It's going to be a while before they can get all this squared away. With lightning out there, you can't do much to fix this stuff. Uh, that's true. It's going to be, you know, tomorrow after all this clears out when folks are going to be able to get out there and, and assess what's really gone on. Um, looks like we'd, we'd mentioned the Beth Page and Dan, we're getting some reports in that um, southwestern, southeastern rather, Sumner County into Wilson County, there's some extensive damage in terms of damaging straight line winds. So perhaps we're talking about some trees down in that area. But right now we're looking at that potential tornado around Beth Page, and you can see that right through there, that rotation as this storm is moving off towards the northeast and headed to the uh, communities that you see here. So we've got Lafayette 408 and over to around Holland at 412 and continuing over to Fountain Run around 417 and around Lamb at 422. So that is our new warning here with that storm moving on towards the northeast. So anybody out ahead of that, make sure you've got your, your goods together, headed to your safe place, get everybody out of the bed. If you know someone that is up in that area, you're watching us tonight, give them a quick call, make sure they're up and ready and aware of the storm as it's moving on by because that very well could be a tornado. We'll keep watching that for you. Severe thunders storm expires here and at 415 so that's the one that you see here and goodness it's already almost four o'clock at this point and then we see those severe thunderstorms even farther down to the south so they'll be moving towards Gordonville over to Noreen and around Statesville as well and a little farther down to the south even more activity I do believe that we had um, that tornado warning reissued to or extended over in Hardin, McNary County, or it canceled. We get a little, a little verbiage on that there. So the one that we were, were talking about a little earlier there has been canceled right now, but still a whole host of severe thunderstorms remain in effect, warnings remain in effect, and then we've got a couple of tornado warnings that remain in effect as well. So I might want to check on these circulations and show folks at home what exactly is going on again. We look here mm. at our debris detector, yeah. and are you looking at right through here? Is that what you're seeing? Sure, yeah, right Beth there. Page yeah. yeah, right there around Beth Page, and that's exactly <coughs> where we are likely seeing this tornado. We saw that indicated on our rotation detector and also with what we're seeing here on this debris signature, which is where that damage happens, where you see damage happen and then it's lofted up inside that tornado. And of course, so high that we get that signature showing up on our de debris detector. And it correlates with where we would think we'd see that circulation right there around Beth Page. Dan? Okay, and so this debris detector is useful for tornadoes. It's also useful for seeing where the strongest winds might be on the leading edge. And so we're looking for cool colors, and that indicates just uh, odd objects, um, different shaped objects being lofted in the air. And on the leading edge, see the blue here, the green, leading edge of this big thunderstorm. Look at that right here. And by the way, we've got some damage video. Where is this? That looks nasty oh All no right. looks like a mobile home okay so a woman's being rescued from her mobile home right now um and that thing looked like it got tossed onto a, a vehicle or two wow that and, and that, that speaks to what we talk about with yeah. mobile homes all the time they're wind socks 80 miles an hour is going to start a mobile home rolling um there's nothing you can do about it there's nothing you can do about it and where are we looking at michael where where are we looking with this Oh, this is still over at Kings and Springs, so quite a bit of damage is happening in Kings and Springs. And, and, you know, even though when you have your mobile homes tied down, they just cannot withstand the winds associated with the tornado, and they usually just end up tumbling over and over. 
And you got a lot of folks um, jogging from that. So we're going to hang with this and we're going to watch the rescue in progress. Uh, looks like a lot of emergency folks there. Um, they obviously have their gear. They're probably currently assessing her health. Yeah, how's she doing? It looks like that thing has been tossed around. So God yes. willing, she didn't get too injured. You have to assume she got some injury because that looks like, I don't know if it's the the roof or the bottom that we're looking it's at. It's hard to tell if which which part is up there because right. you know you got pieces missing off of it. But just um, so scary for folks um, tonight that are in that area in Kingston Springs. So hopefully, as you mentioned, hopefully she's okay. And um, but yeah. well, I'm sure we'll be hearing more about that from our photographer who is out there. So I believe it's the Crab Creek Road area. And the EMA folks, um, if this is Kingston Springs, it'd be Dixon is uh, Cheatham County. Uh, they're saying stay away. Just stay out of there. Wow. Let them do their job. Let them clear the roads because if we have this here, there's a pretty good shot. We've got some blocked roads. And is that a st stretcher? What are they carrying there, Lisa? It, it's hard to tell. It looks like it was or, a piece of equipment, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, Jaws of Life. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So they're going to have to extract her. Mm hmm. Here's the, oh, here's the, um, the stretcher that we got. Yeah. Or in Kingston Springs. Unbelievable. New tornado warning. What yes. you got? Of course, we, we are still have a couple of active tornado warnings in effect right now. One of those has been there uh, covering that Beth Page storm. So where are we looking at here? Lewis this is another one down south, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Wayne County from Clifton um, all the way up to near Hohenwald. We've got a, a potential tornado that is showing up there as well. So you can see that rotation in there. See if we can find that, maybe looking over at our detector. You know, <clears throat> it's not sticking out like a sore thumb mm -mm. as we have had with some of these others tonight, like the one in Kentucky that was just off the charts. Right. And most people slept through that four hours ago, and that had collective winds of about 180 miles an hour of rotation. Feel free to keep your eyes on the, uh, the right side of the screen there, folks. You're watching a live rescue in Kingston Springs. Probable, but not definite, but probable tornado damage. Um, and we're just dealing with the, the raw aftermath of that right now happening live. Mm. Look at all the insulation, how the, it's, just, it's really ripped apart there on the top. Regarding, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Regarding this new tornado warning, so what we're gonna do is if this is brand new, we're not seeing great circulation that sticks out. There's no way the Weather Service would issue a tornado warning for the backside of it. So I'm going to track from about Clifton and, um, and track it this way because that's the best we can do right now um, in terms of a signature and detecting where this thing might be. So it's probably on the far western flank of the new warning. And so let me move this so you can see it. Looks like Flatwoods 408. Lisa, if you see her come out, just uh, interrupt me. Absolutely. Sweetwater 418, Lewis County High School 422, Hohenwald 433, uh, 423, pardon me, Napier at 425, and Kimmins at 426. Time now coming up on 4 o'clock in the morning in just uh, one minute. So tornado warning, you got to be in your safe spot in all those communities. Flatwoods, Hohenwald, the southwest side, uh, definitely in that, but all of Hohenwald impacted by that. Looks like a severe thunderstorm warning has just been allowed to expire at four o'clock in Murray and Eastern Lewis counties. So that zone around Thompson Station doing okay. Spring Hill, this is all non-severe stuff. Moving toward Columbia, lucky you. Good news. Yeah, Good news we'll have to tonight. watch though this, this next one that could come back and get Spring Hill in time, we'll see. Um, that's the one with the tornado warning for it. All right. We I want to move back up here and kind of follow this around up as you can see still some severe thunderstorm warnings here um, for folks that you know are, are making their way out, hopefully to bed before too long but over in Laverne and straight on up to Lafayette now that's where we still have a tornado warning so looks like a, a smaller area now is under that tornado warning right through here and it's been around the Beth Page area that we most likely had a tornado but that thing is screaming on now pretty quickly and moving on towards the northeast 
So we look for that rotation. Can you see it there, Dan, as evidently as we did a little while ago? <clears throat> I see something on the, uh, the the Kentucky line. Yeah. I, I see, so let me circle a few of these spots and we'll look at them on the other reflectivity. Um, there could be something here. Could be something here. There could be something in through here. That would kind of make sense with where it was a little earlier. Yeah, so probably, I don't know, it's tough. You know, and, and these things ebb and flow. They don't hold their own for, for 30 minutes all the time nonstop. They can, new ones can form up. But it would definitely be a little east of th this pink blob. So somewhere, could be something down toward Hartsville. Let's look at the rotation detector again. Um, it's not as easy as it was before. Could be some rotation in through here between Hartsville and Kingston Springs. That, that is possible. So we've got several areas along the line that we're going to have to watch, but this one may be the most in Dixon Springs. Yeah, that's a good one. Wow. I don't know if folks can hear that at home, but there's still a lot of lightning even behind these storms. Yeah. A lot of power outages, too. Yeah. Melanie reports a lot of power outages. What's your uh, number yeah. up to? Is well, it still 9,000? I'm just getting a lot of reports from, from viewers. Uh, Hendersonville, power outage there. Creep Hall, some areas of Davidson County out too, which we knew about, but I'm sure that number from NES is, is growing. 86,000 is what we're getting now. Wow. 86,000. 86, that is uh, crazy. Yeah. And, and most likely from all those straight line winds too. Yeah. Absolutely. Pr primarily from, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, think about that. I mean, just... Uh, Davidson County. I don't know what the population is. What is it? 650,000? Something like that? That's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so the home view, if you're just joining us and you still have power, good for you. If you don't, uh, if well, you lose yeah. power, yeah, if you lose <laughs> power, don't forget. Don't think the, uh, the show's over. You can just go to the News 4 app and watch us that way. Um, but we've got a couple tornado warnings. Um, by the way, Davidson County's in the clear. So we're good to go. No warnings in effect for tornadoes or even really, truthfully, uh, most of the county is clear of a severe thunderstorm warning. And where it's not, the severe action is done. So uh, Davidson County is in the clear, at least for now. Uh, Williamson County still is a sliver of a severe thunderstorm warning. And it's around Nolansville where there could still be some really damaging wind gusts, a really strong wind gust about to move into Rutherford County right over here, southeast side of Nolansville. So until 4.15, another 13 minutes, 12 minutes, severe thunderstorm warning uh, for you. And then that continues farther north, and it looks like that part of the line farther north is the strongest one. So the southeast side of Wilson County, Smyrna and Laverne, it's strong, but it's not as strong as, say, up toward Noreen, moving toward Alexandria. So if you ever go, to, if you ever go from Nashville to Crossville, you know, halfway there, you say, ooh, finally a town, Gordonsville, and it's right near Carthage. It's right not far from the river, essentially. And uh, Gordonsville has some rest stops. <clears throat> Pardon me, Gordonsville is about to get hit pretty good. And it could be from 60 to 70 mile an hour winds. Look at this coming in from the west. It's bowing out. It's around Carthage, north side of Carthage, getting that. So next in line along the river there, Cumberland River continues to go northeast, um, obviously flowing the other way. Granville and Gainesboro, so Jackson County. Once we get past Smith County, Jackson County, which is right here, looks like you've got some very strong storms coming your way. And then Baxter, and that's in Western Putnam County. We'll have to watch all of you. And so if you're just waking up, you get a little time, but these storms are moving quickly, so you don't have too much time. This tornado warning back toward Sumner County has nothing in it of concern. So Sumner County, all clear. Um, Actually, I believe that they canceled that tornado warning, and it's still up there. Still though. populating. Yeah, okay. still populating. And you know, just just to give folks a little history on these storms that are moving eastward, we've got some reports here that trees and power lines are down on Old Rock Castle Indian Lake Peninsula. So that's just um, just another indication of how powerful these winds are tonight. Even straight line winds that can cause all these power lines down and do all this tree damage. And there's more of that to come as these storms continue to move towards the east. And if you're um, just joining us, we're still watching there in the right 
part of the screen. That is a rescue of a mobile home. Uh, a person is inside that mobile home. Looks like it was tossed over, perhaps tornado. There's a lot of damage, we've been told, in Kingston Springs. So that's what we're watching is a live rescue over in the right-hand side of your screen while still covering these tornado warnings that are off um, on the other side of the screen. And as we're, we're, we're watching that rescue, you see me click on various products. I'm looking for things that really stick out and make me want to bring to your attention. Everybody is fair game where you haven't had the storms yet or you're in the middle of them for some damaging wind. But I'm looking for little areas of rotation, maybe little blobs of debris. We've had a lot of debris on the radar tonight. And we've had some of this debris that's been lofted up in the air three miles. And so... And it could be carried, you know, several counties away, theoretically, if it's light enough. And so that's the sort of stuff we're looking for. Um, look at Carthage. The, look at the storm definition around Carthage. The leading edge is so sharp. I'm going to do a storm track on this in a minute. But I was just looking in this general area for maybe some rotation. We'll have to watch this here. This could be something developing between Gordonsville and Carthage. Uh, I'm not sure. But we'll definitely, it looks like there's some debris uh, very interesting. Well, we'll keep a see? close eye on it. Okay. We do want to go in. The Kentucky governor is going to address a lot of that storm damage up in Kentucky. And my goodness, there was so much of that today. So we want to listen in to that um, press conference with him. 81 guardsmen, including search and extraction and debris clearance uh, folks. They'll be arriving in communities this morning. The transportation cabinet has mobilized its heavy equipment to help clear debris. They'll be assisted by the guard and the division of forestry. State police have been working all night to save lives. And an IMT team of EMS, fire, and other professionals are on the way. I've also requested an immediate federal emergency declaration. And we've got two tractor trailers filled with water headed towards Western Kentucky. I want to thank every local EMS employee, police officer, firefighter, and first responder. This has been one of the toughest nights in Kentucky history, and some areas have been hit in ways that are hard to, to put into words. Uh, to all of our Kentucky families that are impacted by this, uh, we want you to know that we are here for you. Uh, we love you. Uh, we are praying for you. Uh, Counties with likely damage and debris as of 4 o'clock include Fulton, Hickman, Graves, Marshall, Lyon, Caldwell, Hopkins, Muhlenberg, Ohio, Breckenridge, Bullitt, Spencer, Shelby, Christian, Logan, Warren, Edmondson, Taylor, and Marion. And as we're Sitting here today, and this is before daybreak, we believe our death toll from this event uh, will exceed 50 Kentuckians, probably end up closer to 70 to 100 lost lives. Remember, each of these are children of God, irreplaceable to their families and to their communities. But we will make it through this. We will rebuild. Uh, we are strong, resilient people. And we're going to be there uh, every step of the way. I'm going to be in Western Kentucky a little later today, as soon as it is safe uh, to travel, to make sure people know that they are not alone, that this is one state standing strong with those that have been impacted. I'm going to turn it over to Michael Dossett uh, from Emergency Management, and then we'll hear from our Adjutant General as well. At the moment, it looks like we're going to have to take questions via uh, email. Uh, those instructions have gone out because of a technical difficulty. Director Dossett. All right, we've been listening to the Kentucky governor Thank there, you, governor. kind of assessing um, the damage that has gone on there, and it's just uh, really in the light of day is going to be amazing, I think, and very tragic what we're going to find in Kentucky. You also may have uh, also witnessed that live rescue where it looks like they were able to bring that victim out there in Kingston Springs. We'll have more on that coming up on News 4 this morning in just a little while. Looking right now, we have a new warning that has been issued here, a tornado warning, and this storm is 
going to continue to move towards the northeast. And let's see, county-wise, which counties all were included in that? It's, right now we're looking at Smith, but it goes into Jackson, it goes into Overton, goes into Clay, and it may even snip a little part of, uh, that, that, that's actually it. Doesn't okay. get Putnam. I knew there were several counties in there. So it's going to head to Granville at 416. And hey, folks, over around Gainesboro, 425 is the estimated arrival time. If you're at Jackson County at the high school, if you live near there, 426 is when you can expect it there. Over to Dotson Branch at 431. And then continuing to Poplar Springs around 434. Rickman, uh, over in that community, that will be shortly thereafter around 439 or so. But that's the storm that we're watching right here. And we can see uh, several little areas that are suspicious with the possibility of rotation here. No doubt some high winds just from this system moving on towards the east. And then there's the notch that you see here. Of course, that's always the winds flowing in and likely where we could see some circulation taking place. And then also right there around Carthage, another notch that is showing up. And again, that possibility of some rotation there too. And Dan showing us that debris detector, which one of those spots right before it updated it was correlating uh, with where that indention was right there in that radar imagery. So a possibility of some of that debris aloft. And it's right on the edge, so sometimes it's hard to tell exactly, but that certainly could be some of that that was showing up right there with the debris detector and that storm as it's moving towards the northeast and a little bit more right in through there right where that notch is and here's the other one this is granville right here please be in your safe spot if you are in granville the same goes for gainsborough and even out ahead over in livingston you've got a little while longer to do that so want to make sure you're prepared there this is going to be in effect until 4:45. so now's your time to make sure you quickly get into your safe place another severe thunderstorm warning it also looks like has been issued along this line and we find that right here continuation of that same storm. This encompasses Birdstown and over to Jamestown. So just the same storm that eventually will be moving your way. More of the northern part of it, though, because this is where we definitely are going to see some higher winds with this bowing that is taking place here. Um, anytime you see that, that's usually an indication that the winds are really going to get your attention as that moves on through. And then the tornado warning looks like more likely on the southern part of that particular cell as it's moving on by towards the northeast right now. And here we go with some of the timelines, some of the um, idea of where this is going to be and when. Headed over to Bowles at 414 to Jackson County High School right around 415. And for Grant Grandview, you can see the Grandview, I should say, uh, really upon you right now. These are fast moving storms. We've been telling you that all, not, all night long and into the morning. Gainesboro at 418 and Salina around 421. And they just continue to rotate through Paytonsboro right around 429. So if you're here or your community here, that means you need to be in the lowest level of your home, your basement, and taking those precautions as this tornado warning is in effect continuing until 445 this morning. And then still, of course, still some gusty winds with the severe thunderstorm that is going to be moving on by. Dan? Okay, Lisa. <clears throat> so we just reset for a moment. Here's a look at forewarned real-time radar. Uh, in fact, we can go to 41 Real Time Radar for the Nashville view, and it shows all that rain across the northern tier. But look at all those storms that continue to trail southwest of town. So Nashville's in great shape now, but if you're watching from Savannah, Linden, Columbia, Smyrna, Murfreesboro has not been touched yet. Cookville, Jamestown, points east. You still have to get through the storm. So, in all likelihood, areas northwest of there are done with severe weather. There still could be some showers and storms, the fronts back to the west, but all in eastern parts of the mid-state, we still have to deal with all this. Now, we look for the red polygons, and those are the tornado warnings. And so one just dropped off, so we still have two on the map, two tornado warnings, and this is their general area. And then we have two severe thunderstorm warnings right here, one, two, and then we have one flash flood warning, now two flash flood warnings, most of southern Kentucky all the way up through Bowling Green because they got a solid three inches of rain before. So a number of warnings, none right now for Williamson or Rutherford. The most dangerous storms now have shifted due east of Nashville. And so they're about to get to the Cumberland Plateau 
And as Lisa mentioned just a few moments ago, where we see the notches, that really gets our attention because that's where the, the, the storm is sort of acting like a vacuum cleaner and sucking up some good, strong inflow. And then on the back side, um, the collapsing downdrafts coming the other way. So we get a little rotation that's sort of initiated on the front edge there. And so let's look for rotation right where we have that tornado warning and we see some. And so it's pretty easy as a meteorologist to pick out where the most dangerous part of this cell is that could be producing a tornado right now. It's around Granville and Gainesboro. It's a little broad, but it's trying to tighten up, it looks like. Max winds right now with that about 60 of rotation. The minus sign, that means 35 miles an hour toward the radar. So 35 that way, 25 that way collective for about 60. So let's go back to this thing that we normally look at for our, our detection of a tornado and it shows the hook. And so we'll track that hook northeast at about 60 and it's gonna take it right over Gainesboro or right near Gainesboro, right over Jackson County is what I meant and right into the heart of Overton County. So here's your updated time. If you're watching from Dodson Branch, 428, Carlock, 430, Poplar Springs, 431. This is the very latest timing for you. Hillham, 435, Sulphur at 437, Holly Springs, just the same. Okalona, now we're talking about Overton County, 439. Livingston, right in the middle of Overton County, 440. And Allen's about the same. So you're saying, hey, well, I live in Fentress, I live in Pickett. Will this get me? It'll definitely get you. We don't know if there'll still be a tornado warning for it. So you have to stay vigilant. Make sure those smart devices are charged, fully charged, and they stay charging. We've had so many power outages. And if you want to continue to watch our coverage, you know, if you do so on the News 4 app, it's going to eat up battery life. So if you have an iPhone and an iPad, you know, charge up everything you can. Have it all ready to go. Some, some people have these, these chargers that, you know, are ready to go when you have no power. And so you can charge after the fact when the power goes out. Make sure that's charged. Make sure that's all juiced up. So the northeastern part of the cell, uh, this line, that's where damaging winds are most likely up and through here. We've got that tornado potential. And in this and through here, still could be throwing out 40 mile an hour winds, but it doesn't look as formidable. I'm gonna put it in motion for the last 30 minutes. And it's almost like the leading push has fizzled. The eastward push has fizzled and it's sort of trying to do one of these now. And so it's lost its eastward momentum. Um, and so the damaging wind threat with that around Smyrna is gone way down. So this is just solid rain. Franklin, get it real good right now. Southeast side of Williamson, that's over around College Grove, Arrington, Almaville. Um, you, you just have beneficial rain. Spring Hill and Thompson Station, very heavy rain coming on in. And then we have this tornado warning that we had before. We even had one in this zone in through here with Lewis County, and that has been allowed to expire or has been canceled. One of the two, it's not showing up anymore. So we just have one tornado warning and then a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings. Now we'll probably have more tornado areas to focus in on because there's several areas of rotation that keep sort of popping up. There's that one in before that we talked about in Jackson County. And so let's look at rotation detector. Look at these. Look at these up toward Clay County. Clay County. Oh yeah. <coughs> Pardon me. I wonder if we're gonna get a tornado warning for at least one of those. So let's look at the radar signature. That's typical again. And it could be, there they are. Do we have a new severe thunderstorm warning? Yeah, right there, right where you are. Just to zoom out a little bit. <coughs> Pardon me, in Tompkinsville. All right, so that's in effect until five o'clock. Tompkinsville, Burksville, but farther south, we've got to watch these little pockets that look like they're trying to intensify. Hermitage Springs, Gamalia, Kentucky is how you say that one. And so winds away from the radar, toward the radar, away from the radar, toward the radar. Two little clusters of rotation right there along the Tennessee-Kentucky line. We'll have to watch, or it could be one larger one that's trying to take over right in through here, right essentially on the east side of Hermitage Springs. So, and then we have that one farther south with a tornado warning down toward Gainesboro. And it's right in through here, right in through there. So two at least that we're watching. Thank you, Melanie. And so 
a lot to watch as these things move toward Livingston, Oklahoma, Rickman, Windletown, eventually Jamestown, all good Cookville. Murfreesboro, you've been so tranquil, so quiet, and I'm happy to say you're staying that way. Now, the chance for severe goes down as we get later in this because what's driving some of the stuff has moved up into the Midwest and it's moving away. And so we see fewer warnings. This looks pathetic down in Louisiana as some of the, the strongest cold air and, and wind energy moves that way. So your severe weather potential is lowest down and through here. And there's even a reasonable shot you won't have any. That's what we're hoping for tonight. Yeah, and Dan, you mentioned we've gotten a lot of emails and social media comments asking questions about, hey, I'm in Murfreesboro, I'm in Lawrenceburg. When are we going to, or are we going to get some of this weather tonight? Can we go to bed? Uh, you know, because you see that long line of it coming all the way down from Texas, and it, it has been spinning up tornadoes off to our west and off to our south down there, too. So, you know, obviously we're keeping an eye on it, but you're right. So back down closer toward areas like Lawrence County, even getting into Rutherford County. We have seen some weather in that northern edge of Rutherford County. In fact, just a few minutes ago, we got a report of a, a, a tree down into a car, uh, I believe. So let me see if I can scroll back and see that real quick. Uh, this was in Rutherford County. Uh, yeah, a tree on a house, excuse me, a tree on a house on Piercy Street in Rutherford County. Lots of reports like this of trees down because of these straight line winds that we've been dealing with really all through the overnight hours. Uh, we've even had some reports, I don't know how accurate it is, close up to 100 miles an hour, but we certainly have had them at least up to about 80 in some spots, so enough to, to knock a tree down, and we have reports of trees down on cars. This is gonna be over in Cheatham County on Indian Springs Road, Pond Creek Road. That's the southern part of Cheatham County. Uh, we also have had some reports of you know trees down, power lines down. Um, really all throughout that same area. Sumner County even too, a snap power pole on Cumberland Hills Drive. And this has certainly been happening in through Nashville as well too with the straight line winds. I haven't seen as many reports in Davidson County, but I'm sure, you know, once we get some daylight, we'll definitely see at least some limbs out in the roadways. Um, you know, maybe you have some patio furniture that's been blown around, things outside. I'm sure we'll get some reports of, of stuff like that pretty soon. Um, all right, just uh, checking the National Weather Service chat here, and it looks like we have seen uh, that rotation that Dan was tracking a little bit ago up closer in the Upper Cumberland Plateau, areas like Clay County weakening a little bit. I'll stop the laps on this and, and just show you if you're, if you're just waking up, if you're hearing sirens where you live, uh, this really right now is going to be really an Upper Cumberland Plateau event at the moment as far as our tornado warnings out near Gainesboro, seeing a lot of heavy rain. Uh, th this. Uh, Rotation here weakening. We'll take a look at that on our own end and, and see that. Still have a few clusters here too. Dan just pointed these out here just over that Kentucky line too, south of Tompkinsville. Let me zoom in and get a couple of uh, street names and communities here for you. Clementsville, Hermitage Springs is again it's, uh, the north side, not Hermitage uh, over in Wilson, Davidson County. This is Hermitage Springs up closer toward the Kentucky state line. Uh, Denton Crossroads, you also are going to be in the path of seeing some of this uh, pretty good rotation here. And then down toward Gainesboro, we're seeing some of this as well right near Dudney Hill, Columbus Hill, Stone, community of Stone. This will be right over North Murray Street and Dodson Branch Highway. It's a pretty big road out that way too. So if you live in these areas, we are seeing some rotation, but it does look like it's weakened just a little bit since our last check-in. And uh, likely a tornado now in Western Clay County near Hermitage Springs. We just showed you that. Uh, much of Putnam, Jackson, Overton, Clay, Pickett, and Fentress County can expect severe and damaging straight line winds as this storm comes through. Possibly even some of these quick spin up tornadoes, which is what we've been seeing uh, kind of the trend with this. So let's go back to our radar. Let me show you because it doesn't really look super impressive here. Notice they've kind of scaled back on that tornado warning here. So it looks like uh, areas like Carthage are now in the clear of any tornado warnings. Uh, if you live closer in towards Salina, you're still included in this, and so is Gainesboro, and also back toward Lafayette as well. We'll get that red sweep going through, give us an updated look at our latest radar scan. Um, and we're now seeing some, some strong rotation there. So let's take a look at that rotation detector one more time. Uh, again, this is going to be east of the Hermitage Springs area, and you can see it right here. 
where we see those green and red colors kind of packed tight together. That's exactly what we're looking for when they're right on top of each other. That does indicate some rotation. So I'm going to switch over to our debris detector. I'm going to highlight this rotation here. You can see it right on Hermitage Springs. Again, this is up in Clay County. And I'm going to turn on the debris detector and see if we see anything. Not a lot, maybe maybe a couple of little areas here just north of where I just circled, just to the northeast there. We could see, and sometimes this really could even be things like limbs or leaves from trees. You know, we're in the fall. We have a lot of leaves that have fallen off trees. Anything like that will get sucked up in this wind. And when we talk about straight line winds, not the rotation, but you know, all that is really causing us some problems tonight. And that's what's actually causing a lot of power outages, down trees, all back to the west of where these active rotations are right now. All right, sorry, just bear with me. I'm, I'm just reading our chat right now. Okay, so this is one we're kind of focused on right now. This is where the uh, active tornado warning is, and it looks like the National Weather Service will continue this. This is for Clay, Jackson, and Overton County until 445 this morning, and uh, this is located right near Red Boiling Springs at 11 miles northwest of Gainesboro. This one's moving at about 55 miles an hour. So let's uh, move out. Now, I want to show you this one down here, too. This one's the Gainesboro one I was talking about. We'll take a look at this, too, and see if there's any kind of debris that we're detecting with this rotation as well. So I'm going to circle this. And this is going to be right over Highway 56 and that's North Murray Street too. So if you live in that area, this is exactly where that rotation is going over. And we turn our debris detector. Not much right there either. Notice what I'm looking for are these cooler colors, the yellows, the blues, but that blue you see right here off to the right. This is not going to be really so much from the rotation, <clears throat> excuse me, but that's probably going to be from the from the winds that we're seeing. So on the edge of that line of storms blowing through, it's going to be bringing a lot of wind and blowing around a lot of debris that's out there on the ground. As I mentioned, things like leaves, sticks, uh, anything you ha might have in your yard too. Another little pocket looking like it's kind of picking up right here as well. This is over in Richville and Midway, right over Turkey Creek Road, Dry Creek Road as well. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so much talking tonight. Uh, and as we see that come closer, it's going to kind of move up to the northwest. So I'm going to scale back on this. I'm going to put a, a track on both of these because these are both moving, again, very fast. The trend all night long with these has been moving anywhere from 50 to even 60 miles per hour to the east northeast. So the latest track on this one, this is the one that's just over that Kentucky line. This is going to be including Blythe at 433, uh, Kettle VTU at 443, and the town of Albany, 455. It looks like we do have another new tornado warning just issued, and they probably just extended this one a little bit. Uh, yep, yeah, exactly. So we we're just looking at this. I was just telling you how that track is heading this way, and they've now included Burksville, Kentucky in this as well. So this is coming out of uh, the the Kentucky area, Cumberland and Monroe County included in this tornado warning until 426 this morning. And again, that's moving northeast at 55 miles an hour. And, and you can see I just did the track on that. So if you do live in that area, this is going to be coming to you within the next couple of minutes. Uh, the community of snow at 456. So there's that one area of rotation. I want to kind of scoot down here a little bit further south. This one that's just uh, up to the northeast of Gainesboro. I want to take a, a track on this one too because this is another separate little pocket of rotation. And I'm going to take that from the center. I'm going to move this kind of east northeast right around 55 miles an hour. We'll get you the latest track on this one here. So if you live a, a little bit closer toward Livingston, 444, so this is coming to you. So you've got just a couple minutes to go ahead and get to your safe place now, whether that's maybe a coat closet, maybe a half bathroom, uh, maybe a, a lower level bathroom in your house would be a great place to be. Oak Grove, this is Kentucky, uh, 448, Monroe, 450 this morning, and Eastport at 457. These are just you know separate little pockets of rotation here that we're watching. So if you're just turning on the TV, Maybe you've heard tornado sirens where you live. Right now, the main event is as I zoom out to give you a wide view of the entire mid-state. This is really going to be upper Cumberland Plateau. We've got southern Kentucky, kind of central southern Kentucky, areas like Burtsville, Tompkinsville. You're getting the heaviest of this now. 
So let's zoom on back into this one more time. Again, this long line of storms you saw there, this is kind of going to be happening throughout the rest of the morning hours. This is right now coming through areas like Murfreesboro, who hasn't really seen any rain all night long. You're going to get some too, but right now just some heavy downpours. This right here, what we're looking at is going to be where all the action is as far as the severe thunderstorm warnings and the tornado warnings. So our attention is still kind of up here closer in toward the Clay County area and also into southern Kentucky. Uh, you've got areas like Tompkinsville, Burksville, right in the path of that rotation. As you can see here, those greens and red colors there together. Let me zoom back down here closer. Just this is south of Salina. It's kind of hugging three counties at once here. If you live near Carlock, uh, Hillam, Holly Springs, this will be right in your community too. And I'll give you a couple street names, Billy Hill Road, Baptist Ridge Highway, Turkey Town Road. If any of those sound familiar to you, uh, that's going to be where this rotation is. It's right over you. Uh, again, this tornado warning going until 445 this morning. So 15 minutes to go on this one here in the upper Cumberland Plateau in Tennessee and this one in Kentucky will be going until five o'clock this morning. That one was just issued just a little bit ago uh, till five o'clock and that includes Monroe and Cumberland counties uh, and really look at it right near Tompkinsville and that one's moving northeast at 55 miles per hour. Uh, let's see, we, we, a lot of lot of storm reports coming in now that we're kind of having people waking up after it's kind of blown through our, our western areas. Just got a storm spotter saying a tree is blocking the road in Wilson County. This is going to be at Philadelphia Road and Justice Lane. Uh, Clay County tornado moved in Kentucky. We just saw that. So circulation is going to be uh, going into southern Kentucky right now. And we'll take a debris detector and right there just south of Tompkinsville, right where we were looking at that rotation. Looks like we have some debris detected right near Ned Jackson Road, State Highway 216. If you live in, uh, near Saline Road, right near you there. So this is where we're seeing a couple of uh, areas of our debris detector picking up on at least something there with some of that rotation that we've been seeing. Uh, we've had a lot of debris detected uh, back toward our west. Right now, it's not going to be as accurate since all that has passed by. But notice you see those cool colors back toward uh, closer towards Sumner County, even in North Davidson County. Probably had some active debris out there earlier with all those straight line winds. Um, just filtering in through all these storm reports here. Right now, only circulation that they're uh, worried about the National Weather Service is in eastern Jackson County moving into Overton, which we just saw. We just put that track on here. That's right near Livingston. You can see a little bit of debris there probably as well. We'll take a look at the rotation detector to see if it's, yep, right, right there just north of it. It's where that debris detector is right now. It looks like they have another new warning coming in in just a second. Get and Fentress. So we'll kind of, we'll take a wider view here. You're already included in this uh, severe thunderstorm warning, especially if you're ever near Pickett, Overton County. Overton has also been included in this tornado warning here that's affecting places like Gainesboro and Salina, but it's going to look like extend and continue to a new one here in just a matter of seconds. So, and it's it's really that area of rotation right there that they're watching as it's moving. Let's put a track on that just just over the last, I'll just do 15 minutes because these are flying by, and you can see it's kind of moving just slightly to the to the northeast. And as it heads closer toward highway, that's 111, big highway there, all the way from Birdstown down to Livingston. You'll be affected by this here in the coming minutes, really. And we'll go back into southern Kentucky real quickly, too, and show you the same track. If I can get my mouse to work here. Our computer has had a lot of action here throughout today. And you can see this area of rotation too, right near Tompkinsville. You, see, you can even see here in the last 15 minutes when that tornado warning was issued for Monroe County there, right through Burksville. You can see that rotation forming too. It looks like it is weakening a good bit too as it approaches Kettle, heading closer toward Burksville too. All right, there's that new tornado warning. You can see right there on real-time radar. That's the one that's going to include Clay, Fentress, Overton, and Pickett until 515 this morning. That's right near Livingston. So we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, close this out and put a new track on that. Now that one's been issued. I'll put the rotation detector here and turn the time lapse off. And there's that new warning right here until 515. And, and here's that circulation 
We'll take it right from the middle of it there. We'll move it out about 55 miles an hour. So if you live over in Big Springs, this is going to be to you at 447. Monroe, 449. Birdstown, 458. Pickett County High School, also at 458. So if you know where that high school is, you want to get to your safe place, safe place here in the next less than 20 minutes. You got to get there quickly and uh, over toward Helena over at 502. So this is we're approaching five o'clock in the morning and still dealing with these storms that we've been really seeing causing tornado warnings off to our West County since about gosh, 11 o'clock last night. So this has been hours going on here. Let me turn that rotation detector on. Keep that on and also take a look at the debris detector here. Maybe seeing a little bit. I'm going to circle this for you just so we can see exactly what the rotation. Oops, that's a pretty big one. A little bit smaller. And then we'll turn on that debris detector and you can see those kind of yellow colors. Maybe something there. But for the most part, these are just kind of these small little pockets of rotation very quickly spinning up. And that's what they've been doing all night long. You'll see very unusual line of storms and then a couple little pockets very close together of probably twin tornadoes if they do be end up being confirmed tornadoes. I'm anxious to see what happens out in Dixon County when they start to do their surveying out there. We had a very similar uh, situation happen out that way in Dixon County earlier where we had basically two tornadoes going on at once in the same county, just miles apart from each other. So I'm going to zoom out real quickly here, show you forewarned real-time radar. We'll turn on our OHX radar because we're getting a lot of rain really starting to pick up down south. Uh, this would be closer out toward uh, Wayne County. If you live in Savannah, you're seeing, you saw some of that rain coming through. This is all stretching in from that line down to the south of us. Waynesboro seeing some heavy rain right now as well. Some lightning filtered in with this too, but it's not going to be as severe down here, closer toward Hohenwall, Mount Pleasant, Columbia, Spring Hill, just a lot of heavy rain. Right near Rutherford County in Almaville, right over 840. This is heading your way, and it looks like there's some heavy rain here as well. We've also seen a lot of hail too, and you can see here, wow, the hail swath all the way from Williamson County and through Wilson, especially seeing a ton of this hail and up into Sumner County too. So hail has definitely been reported. That's been one of our uh, most reported things we've seen with these storms that have rolled through. Uh, but again, we'll take our attention up here toward the upper Cumberland Plateau in southern Kentucky because this is where we will be seeing our tornado warnings that go until 515 this morning. So if you live in Clay, Fentress, Overton or Pickett County, this one was just issued for you just moments ago uh, right near Livingston. And we'll take a look uh, at that here on our rotation detector as well. You can see just north of Livingston here. It's kind of uh, almost almost hugging two counties at the moment, but right near Highway 111. If you use that, if you know where it is. Uh, it's going to be right near you. Salina Highway over near the community of Unity. Independence and even up toward Plain Grove. This is heading right for toward you. And there's also looks like a, a fair view up here, too, but it's not fair view in Williamson County. This is fair view up in the, in the plateau area. So if you live there, you still have active tornado warnings and a severe thunderstorm warning and as well as these wind advisories going until noon tomorrow. All right, Dan, you hopping in? Sure. <laughs> Give your voice a break, too. It's, it's been a long, I, long day, huh? <laughs> I just rested mine for a few minutes. Yeah, the, um, it's interesting to see what's going on as we keep this wide view. Let's go back to the OHX radar just for a minute because we don't want to uh, mislead anybody about all that stuff right there. The picture really is evolving here. And if you look at where we see the polygons that we've talked about, there's a severe thunderstorm warning, the yellow one. There's a few tornado warnings up and through here. There's the flash flood warnings up and through there. And then there's nothing for warnings farther south and west. So as we talked about before, the wind energy help driving some of this is lifting out. And so we may not have severe weather down and through here. We might, but you might miss it as all that wind energy feeding this stuff continues to hang up with those tornado warnings. Can you right click on the um, show me the tornado watch right click on the uh, the uh, warnings and you can turn on the tornado watch and I think we have a new one in through here. Um, I don't know the expiration time of that but I think southeastern middle Tennessee is in that. What do we got for that uh, timing? 
So it was 5 o'clock for Nashville, 11 o'clock, but this goes into East Tennessee. So it's not just Middle Tennessee. So don't worry, Middle Tennessee, you're not going to have a tornado threat until 11 o'clock. But way down toward Chattanooga, you might, or even east of there until all this moves along. So something we'll have to watch for a while. Um, but right now, all the activity is up and through here. How is the debris signature doing from that cell that's now moving up toward Burksville? Because that looked really strong before when you showed it about 10 minutes ago, Melanie. Um, and it was right around, it was right around there. So now it looks like it's, th there could still be a couple. It looks like there's one right, not, right near Burksville, yes. And so we still have a tornado warning here runs right over Burksville. So Burksville, you've got to be in your safe spot. You've got to be in the lowest level of your house. If you have a basement, that's fantastic. That's great. Or storm shelter. Some people have storm shelters because this circulation is coming your way. It's racing northeast at probably 60 miles an hour. And it looks like there's some lofted debris from this. And so it's going to roll over Burksville. I don't know if we can get a storm track, a new one on that, just north of Kettle. So staying north of Kettle. Cumberland County, Kentucky, not to be confused with the um, within Tennessee. How's our ticker doing? Or we have it over there. Okay, good. I couldn't see it over here. Great. So it looks like it's going to move toward the north and east. Snow, maybe 501 in the morning in Cumberland City at 506 or so. So we have that tornado warning there. Then down into Tennessee, Pickett County. I've heard Melanie mention that a number of times, Clay County. We've got a couple of uh, areas of rotation that we're watching until 515 for that tornado warning. And that goes all the way to Jamestown, not far from Allard in Fentress County. Livingston, you're in that. Are there any? So this is the main body of rotation that is moving toward Birdstown, 453 for you. In Pickett County High School, your new time is 453 as well. It's in this zone. It's pretty tough when you get close to the Cumberland Plateau because the radar is a good distance away. You've got some terrain out here, but we're seeing something that looks like some rotation right there and it's going to roll right through the main main heart of Pickett County. So the far northeastern reaches of the mid-state. Now in terms of debris for this area, we've got the stuff up toward southwest of Burksville, maybe some debris right here. And does it look like uh, there's a tornado warning for that? And it's sort of difficult to see if some of this debris on the debris detector, the, the little cooler colors, the yellows, are indicative of maybe some dust or some leaves being blown up by the gusty winds because all along the front edge of this thing we have some really strong winds rotation path not showing a whole lot around that right now it is showing some decent rotation up toward Burksville but this rotation detector and the other one um, we continue to check both of these products as these storms continue to lift north and east looks like Hendersonville we've got homes damaged on Leota Drive so we've got a, a report, uh, homes damage on Leota Drive, Hendersonville, Walton's Ferry Road, and Three Lock Access Road, power lines and trees down on the road. And so a number of places damaged in Sumner County. Street lights out, power outages, Sumner County, Indian Lake to Saunders Ferry. Melanie may have mentioned that one a short time ago. Look at all this down and through here, very heavy rain and it's training over the same areas. We're going to have to watch. We talked about a, a chance for some flooding. There's been some flooding up and through here. There's a chance that more develops in through here. We need this line to continue to push farther east a little more quickly as opposed to the heaviest downpours rolling over the same area. But non-severe stuff. We have j just, some, just some strong thunderstorms with some lightning and then again a couple of tornado warnings in our far northeastern counties. Rebecca Cardness is here right now standing by. She's got a whole bunch of damage reports to tell you about right now. Yeah, Dan, we're certainly starting to feel and hear the impact of this long string of storms that passed through overnight that you guys have been tracking so diligently. We want to report to you here that a very large corridor of I-40 is shut down currently. This is I-40 eastbound from, you've got a map here on your screen now, from South Dixon, the South Dixon area, all the way until the Duck River near Hurricane Mills. So I looked it up here on my phone. That's about a 30 mile stretch of the interstate. So a very large portion of I-40 eastbound is shut down right now as crews begin to survey damage from these hours long storms that we know have been very destructive, very violent overnight. This is one of those situations, of course, where it's of course still dark outside. So we'll start to see the story that this storm has left behind here as we begin to get some light. But as of right now, again, I-40 
is shut down from the South Dixon area all the way until about the Duck River. We're going to toss to a quick break here right now. We'll be right back. Okay, we'll, we'll take it, Rebecca. Yes. All so, right. Yep, go ahead. We'll get back to our radar real quickly because we're not going to go to break just yet because we have a couple of uh, active tornado warnings still out there. And this is going to be toward southern Kentucky and the upper Cumberland Plateau. So uh, until we're free to go of these, we're going to make sure that everyone... Uh, is aware of what's going on. Make sure you're getting into your safe place. Still have this tornado warning up in southern Kentucky. This is going to be up closer toward Burksville. So if you live over in, um, in Monroe County and Cumberland County, Kentucky, this will be going until 5 o'clock this morning. Uh, so just a little while, 15 minutes to go on that one. And then we're also watching this one in the upper Cumberland Plateau. And this includes several counties. We've got Pickett, Overton, Clay, and it looks like maybe even a little bit of Macon County included in there too, and Jackson. Uh, this goes until 5:15, so 30 more minutes to go on this one. And you're really just seeing a lot of intense rain right now, and we have been seeing several pockets of some uh, rotation with this as well. And we'll take a look at our rotation detector to see what it's looking like now. Still a little bit here, but it, it looks like it's weakening a little bit from the last time we checked in, just south of Birdstown, right over Highway 111. This will be right between Birdstown and Livingston. I'll try to zoom in closer to give you some more rows. I know this is a more rural area, and, and Dan also made a good point here, too, mentioning that it may not look as significant as it really should, only because of just how far away, uh, uh, measuring wise how far away it is from our radar and, and being able to pick it up and detect it. So Livingston Highway and or Highway 111, whichever you call it, this is going to be right over you in the community of Midway, Sunset, Fairview, not to be confused with Fairview down in Williamson County. This is up in the upper Cumberland Plateau, Fairview. Uh, and if you live uh, Birdstown, we mentioned that one too. Uh, looks like maybe Beeson Road, if I'm saying that correctly, is included. And then over toward Nick Road, Clark Mountain Road. If any of those roads sound familiar, if that maybe is in your neighborhood, you just want to make sure you are in your safe place because a tornado warning is still active for those areas, and we do have some rotation that is picking up a little bit on the on our radar detector. Livingston, it looks like your rotation is uh, weakening here. It looks like it's uh, you're almost almost in the clear, but you're still included in this tornado warning until 515. But out near places like Oak Grove, Oakdale, Garrett's Mill, Big Springs, Black Creek, Holly Springs, all those communities are seeing a lot of just really heavy rain right now. And I don't want to downplay the wind either, because even if you're even anywhere in the mid state, if you're not dealing with any kind of rotation or tornadoes, the straight line winds are doing incredible amounts of damage all across the area. I'm getting pictures in now out from Hermitage even. Uh, Hermitage right near Nashville of seeing trees down, debris everywhere, uh, trees on homes, trees on cars. Uh, so a lot, this is happening, keep in mind too, while a lot of folks are sleeping. So there's gonna be a lot of people across Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky waking up. Even if you didn't wake up to a tornado warning, you could be waking up to damage to your car if you park outside, maybe a portion of your roof. Uh, we have a couple of crews that are actually going to check out an apartment complex out on Nolansville Pike where supposedly the roof is missing. So uh, as soon as they get there, we'll we'll hear from them. But, uh, you know, even if we're not dealing with active, severe weather, uh, these straight line winds can do a lot of damage and sometimes even more damage than a tornado can do. Uh, we, we've dealt with this several times here in Middle Tennessee, and the last one I can remember is the most notable one uh, was when we had in May of 2020 a, a ton of straight line. That was a derecho, actually, but, you know, a lot of straight line winds coming in with that one and knocked out a lot of power. And we're also dealing with a lot of power outages all throughout Nashville and really all throughout the mid-state, too. We had reports earlier of down in Lawrenceburg of several people, over a thousand people without power. And Lawrenceburg really hasn't even seen the rain yet. You're, you're just now getting it down south of there, uh, down south of Nashville, I should say, down closer toward Lawrence County, out near Wayne County. You've seen that. Um, even Giles County now starting to really just see the rain start to inch into your county right over I-65. So places like Pulaski, you'll be seeing this here shortly. Uh, but really, even ahead of all this rain coming in, we're seeing a lot of straight line winds. This is a live look out in Kingston Springs. This is where we were showing you a live picture of earlier of a woman actually being rescued from a mobile home that was turned over. Uh, now he's just out there serving all the damage. 
you know, possibly a tornado out there earlier. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but we did see a lot of rotation on a rotation detector around the Kingston Springs area much earlier in the morning. And so this is really the aftermath of what we're seeing here. And I, I imagine that a lot of folks across the mid state will be waking up to very similar situations here this morning. Once we get daylight, which is going to actually be closer towards seven o'clock in the morning, I believe our sunrise time is 650. Six yeah, 648 <clears throat> in the morning. Uh, then we'll be able to see a lot more. But as you can see here in this live picture, already a lot of emergency crews out. Looks like a lot of chainsaws are coming out to help chop up these limbs and trees that have fallen. And that will probably be the case in a lot of communities across the mid state this morning as a lot of roadways might be blocked. Uh, so, you know, it's the weekend. We're not going to have a huge rush hour commute in the morning, at least across Nashville, but in many areas too. Um, so if you're out and about in the morning and you might stumble upon maybe a roadway block from a tree down, I, I, I would not be surprised. Um, and again, a lot of folks might be waking up to even seeing some damage at their homes too. Uh, but right now, just a strong line of storms coming through. The main concern still at the moment are these two active tornado warnings. One of them in southern Kentucky, which includes Burksville, one of the biggest uh, towns included in this. This is going to be over in Cumberland and Monroe County. Just a little bit longer to go on this one. That expires at 5 o'clock in the morning. And then down here in the upper Cumberland Plateau, Pickett, Overton, Jackson, and Clay Counties. This one goes until 515 in the morning. Um, and you can see here a lot of heavy rain with this. We've also had a lot of hail reports too. If I turn on the hail swath, you can kind of see behind this, behind that active tornado warning, back toward Carthage, Lafayette, uh, lots of reports of hail uh, today and this morning with all these storms coming through. So don't be surprised if you hear that on your roof or if you even uh, can see it maybe on your patio or front porch. Let's take a look at our rotation detector. We had we had some good rotation here, a little bit closer toward Birdstown over Highway 111, and it's definitely weakening, but maybe seeing a little bit of green here still mixed in with that red. But uh, good news that that is weakening, and it looks like it's also weakening a little bit here too, back in Southern Kentucky, but still just a little bit, still able to pick up on our rotation detector northeast of Burksville. So that one should be expiring soon. Um, I don't see if they've said anything about wanting to extend this at all. So maybe we'll be in the clear here in the next little bit as far as those tornado warnings. And again, if you're just flipping on the TV, you're watching News 4. Uh, oh, well, new tornado warning just came in. Let's take a look at that one. Let me pull this up real quickly. They may have just actually extended this one. Yeah, they're, they're just including this to go even further out in southern Kentucky. This will be a little bit further northeast of Burksville. So if you live uh, anywhere north of that in Jamestown, Kentucky, this will include you. So it looks like they're seeing uh, possibly a little bit of rotation still working out that way. That could put some areas in jeopardy there. This will be places like Longbottom, Freedom, right along Highway 127. That's the, the, the biggest road that will be impacted by this new tornado warning that was just issued. Oops, we close out so you can see that here. That one just issued here in Southern Kentucky. All right, we were, we were just looking before our before I went to that guys. We had a live picture there of Kingston Springs. We've been showing you this one off and on. I mean, just all the damage there. Trees down looks like a lot of debris here. Actually, wow. That, that looks like the signs of a tornado oh, yeah. to there's, me, for sure. You can see, no you can see the rotation <clears throat> there. So, you know, none of these have, have been confirmed yet, of course, as it just happened. You know, we'll have the National Weather Service out there surveying, I'm sure, you know, right at sunrise tomorrow or today in a few hours. <laughs> sure. But, but uh, you can confirm that right now. Yes. I mean, that's just awful. Yeah, a lot of, lot of tornado damage here in Kingston Springs. And, and that's exactly where we saw a lot of this rotation earlier too. That was, you know, right near Highway 70, very mm -hmm. populated area mm -hmm. out there uh, for, for that county. Um, we saw a person have to be rescued from their mobile home as well. So it looks like at least wherever Thomas Davis is has been hit pretty hard. And it's uh, significant debris has been littered mm -hmm. everywhere. So I don't know if we're seeing sheets or shirts or what all that white stuff mm -hmm. is, but it's on everything. And wow, oh, is that wow. a piece of a trailer? Or it what it is looks that like um, siding of some sort, siding. some kind of metal. Sure, and it's all mangled. So there's power lines, 
the question will be, I mean, obviously. God, that looks like an above ground pool for a second there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, it's all yeah. in the trees. It's, it, you know, so they'll, they'll spend a lot of time figuring out how strong these <laughs> tornadoes were. And there were probably a number of them because it didn't look like they stayed on the ground continuously, you know. And so as soon as it lifts up and then it comes back down, that becomes tornado number two. Mm -hmm. And so we had five in Middle Tennessee on Monday, two in Southern Kentucky in our area. And um, we may have another half dozen or more, um, probably more based and on all the tornado warnings and the speed that some of these things had today. And I was going to say, if I remember correctly, back toward Kingston Springs, we, we were checking in on a rotation detector and it looked like on our end at least 110 miles an hour at the time when we were we were checking that as far as wind speeds. Yeah, so if you're if you're up around 110, you're a high end EF1 essentially. Mm -hmm. So and we had a couple EF1s the other day, <clears throat> a couple uh, half dozen, not half dozen, but close to a half dozen EF zeros. Um, and so what an EF1 does, it, it, it breaks windows, it tears parts of roofs off, and it can do some, it can do some structural damage to a well-built home and it absolutely will destroy a mobile home. It'll destroy a barn, uh, but it can actually do some, some minor structural damage to a, Mm -hmm. a well-built house you know it's not usual but it, it can usually it takes EF2 or stronger to to start to chew away at walls of a, a well-built house and Dan we actually have Thomas Davis our photojournalist here on the microphone so Thomas I'm gonna ask you to jump in here and, and tell me what you're seeing well right now we're on Sneed Road out here in Cheatham County you can see us a lot of the fire department here is going door to door down Sneed Road uh, just trying to see if there's anybody that is yelling for help or, or needing rescue this morning. We've got a lot of houses on the ground. As you can see, power lines all, the, all down the roadway as well. A lot of debris everywhere. There's a debris field at least uh, from on Speed Road on both sides of the road. I know it's very dark out here. I'll try to get some light on for you. Uh, but you can see there's a number of houses that are just off the valley here. Uh, that are all on the ground. So right now, everyone's being real careful. As you can see, one of the biggest threats during this time is these power lines that are down on the roadway. You have to be real careful about these power lines. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to follow the fire department up here. They have not been inside this house. This is the house that I was just showing you uh, just a moment ago. Uh, the damage that has been done, the roof is completely ripped off of this home. Uh, as you can see, the fire department now trying to uh, get in here and see if anybody is inside and see if they need rescue this morning. Glad you're staying safe out there too. I know it's the rain. We can see the rain coming down on you. This is not an easy job to do. So thank you for getting out there with all the EMS and, and showing us what's going on. Yeah, Thomas Davis, thank you so much. Now in southern Cheatham County, Kingston Springs got hit hard tonight. Number of spots got hit very, very hard tonight. And you know, that's just probable tornado damage there, mm -hmm. but there's so much damaging wind, straight line damaging wind damage that people, they say, hey, we didn't have a tornado. They want to go about their Saturday morning errands and mm -hmm. they're going to see power lines down. Someone tweeted me before said, hey, Hillsborough Road at Murray Lane has a power line down. Hillsborough Road is the main thoroughfare going from right. Nashville to Franklin. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of turning around. Um, don't chance it and just be ready to, to shut down your Saturday plans and let crews get out there and take care of business because there's a yeah. lot to take care of. You make a good point there too, Dan, about the straight line winds versus a tornado when we actually have rotation. A lot of people will wake up and think they have been hit by a tornado when it's really straight line winds. And, and a lot of times the straight line winds can do just as much, if not more, damage than a tornado can in some cases. And we've seen a lot of that, even where you haven't even had a tornado warning, you have these winds coming in you know, over 60, 70, even up to 80 miles an hour. We've got people with trees down this morning, trees on top of their homes, on top of their cars. We've even had uh, reports of roof damage, roof uh, pieces of the roof missing yep. on top of an apartment complex in one case that we have crews checking out now. So uh, the winds will definitely be causing us some damage and, and they're still going. That wind advisory goes until noon today. Yeah, and we do want to mention that uh, Cumberland County, Kentucky, you've had a tornado warning, but the threat has moved away. So you're in good shape. And so while it may, may still say, you know, tornado warning for Cumberland County, Kentucky, you're, you're in the all clear. So we're really just focused on Pickett, Fentress, 
and part of Overton County, three counties in Middle Tennessee. That is the only active tornado or severe thunderstorm warning we have right now for us um, where there's an area of concern. So uh, still some flooding in Southern Kentucky. We'll have to watch. You know, we don't have a major flooding concern with this setup, but there could be some flooding that develops because some of these storms are training or going over the same general area, storm after storm after storm. For example, from Waynesboro and Lawrenceburg, just north of you, through Columbia, Murfreesboro, we're just gonna have to watch that zone in through there um, over the next little while. Yeah, and if you're just tuning in, welcome to News 4 today at 5 o'clock. We have been wall-to-wall -wall coverage since last night, really, yeah. at 10, 11 o'clock, with active storm warnings, tornado warnings, all starting off from the west, still pushing through the mid-state now, really actively with, with tornado warnings up in the upper Cumberland Plateau. But as you can see here on our forewarn real-time radar, a lot of folks waking up probably to a lot of thunder, which we're hearing here at our mm -hmm. Channel 4 studios, uh, and lightning, too, and a lot of heavy downpours and of course that gusty wind and if you're curious about the severe weather threat um, we just hit five o'clock of course and so the tornado watch has been allowed to expire for a big chunk of the mid-state but some of you still have a tornado watch until 11 and that's essentially where we're seeing action right now or we haven't seen thunderstorms yet today so the southeastern part of the area so you're in that until 11 o'clock McMinnville Manchester Crossville Jamestown Back toward Moore County, we had that tornado the other day in Bedford, Moore, and Coffee County, so you still have that tornado watch in effect until 11, and then back toward Lawrence and Giles counties as well. We can be hopeful that most of the strong wind energy that generates severe thunderstorms is continuing to move away, but we can't guarantee that, or at least tornadoes, but we can't guarantee that. We've got a new severe thunderstorm warning that just popped up right now, yeah. and so let's take a look at that one. Southern Tier. And so that's why we had that severe weather potential still holding on. So heads up Lawrenceburg, heads up Marshall County all the way to Lewisburg. Looks like maybe just a, not quite the western edge of Lincoln County. This zone in through here and where Columbia, you've gotten some rounds of rain. It's been relatively quiet. Linville, this is coming your way. So damaging straight line wind is the main concern with this one. There could be some pea size hail but it's really not as big of a, a hail producer as it could be a damaging wind producer as it moves toward Linville. I think it's gonna really start to pick up in Linville, the sound outdoors as this storm comes in in just the next couple of minutes. And any of this heavy, heavy rain in through here, the, the dark red, the brick reds, could bring some of that strong wind energy right down to the ground. 60, 70 miles an hour could take out your power as it's moving on in. So if you lose power, just check us out on the News 4 app, we're streaming right now. We're not going to stop streaming until this threat is done. We're, of course, in the newscast currently from 5 to 7 o'clock. And so we'll definitely stay with you through that time. But Linville, 513, we just talked about Linville. Ahead of that, Lawrenceburg, 507, Liberty Hill, 508, Campbellsville, 511 or so, Leoma, you're in that, 513, 514 at New Prospect, 517, Marshall County High School. Marshall County, it's right here. This is Marshall County. I-65 goes through that. So that's how fast this is going in Bodenham, about 518. Could be some damaging winds with that. What's the story with those tornado warnings across the Northeast? That's that brand new severe thunderstorm warning. So we're talking about Pickett, Fentress, and Overton counties. And there still could be some circulation with this, but it's about to move out. The leading edge, the most dangerous part of this is about to move out of the area. It looks like still near Jamestown, maybe. We have something that we have to really uh, be vigilant for. So in Jamestown, you're still going to be in your safe spot. Could be some debris. It's unclear. That looks like a cool color mm -hmm. matching up with some of that rotation. And that's going to move out of Middle Tennessee here shortly. But for the next probably, what is that, until 515? Just until 515. Okay. So hopefully by 515, we're done with it in Middle Tennessee. And it becomes an East Tennessee problem. And then it looks like there's still some very strong storms in through here. We'll have to see if we get a new severe thunderstorm warning or something like that moving into the main body of Fentress County, not just northern in time as well. But all heavy downpours, lightning and thunder. Again, Nashville, we're done with severe. You're done with rain in Dover and Paris. Just turned off in Dover. Here's Paris. Here's Hopkinsville. We've dried out. And, of course, as the rain turns off, it's going to make it a lot easier for these rescue crews, for the recovery crews to get out and do their thing. 
This is not the cold front. The cold front's still back to the west, but this has taken all the energy and is shifting it to the east. And the cold front comes through later on today. There could be an additional shower, possibly, but the severe threat is along and with that leading edge moving toward the east. So time now 505 and we'll be in the thick of it for another several hours in southeastern middle Tennessee. So initially we said the timing, uh, generally speaking, about midnight to about 10 o'clock in the morning. It's going to get in a little sooner and move out a little sooner, probably eight or nine o'clock um, moving out of middle Tennessee. We'll have to see how that goes, but that's the way it appears right now. What's the expiration time on this, Melanie, this morning? Oh, uh, let's take a look. 530. 5.30, so we have that 5.30 warning. We have this until 5.15, and we have this until, I believe, 9.45, the green. That is a flash flood warning in effect for southwest Kentucky. They got a lot of rain before, and they got that tremendously strong tornado as well. And it will be very interesting to see how strong that one is when they go and do the assessment of that. That rolled over Bowling Green. And on the radar, it was shown rotation with Lisa and me when we were tracking it for a while of 180 miles an hour. Not to say that the tornado had that, but that could have been a very strong one in parts of southwest Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And Danny, you know, we're talking about that severe thunderstorm warning down to the south of us, which includes places like Lawrence County. If you look even further south, you see down in northern Alabama, even parts of maybe Mississippi, they're even included. We've got more severe thunderstorm warnings. And we're not totally in the clear yet as far as our southern counties go. We still have a tornado watch that stays in effect until 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, so as that line pushes through, it is possible. Possible. It looks to me, you know, like it's looking a little bit better as far as that severe threat goes. Uh, but until 11 o'clock this morning, we are going to keep watching that. In fact, you know, we were looking at this uh, as far as that severe threat for today. Remember yesterday, we had a lot of reds and oranges and hands and moderate risk out for our western counties. That played out pretty perfectly about what we were saying was going to happen. Now today, it's that severe threat for what was day two yesterday is now day one has shifted and we are still under a slight risk. It still includes Nashville, but we already saw that early this morning. So areas to the east and south of Nashville could still be uh, under the gun as far as maybe some more severe weather, more severe thunderstorm warnings definitely possible as well. So we'll keep our eye out for that. But again, that tornado watch goes until 11 o'clock this morning for those southern tier counties and really the eastern ones too for the plateau. Okay, I'll turn that off because I know the red looks a little scary there on the radar, but here's that line of storms we're watching right now pushing through areas that really haven't even seen rain yet to tonight, last night or this morning. We've been here since the overnight, so we're not really sure what to call it <laughs> this morning. Here through Murfreesboro, you're seeing some of this rain right now as well. Over 840 near Almaville, heavy rain coming down. Also a lot of lightning associated with this, this storm system too. All the way down toward Thompson Station, Spring Hill, into Columbia. You're also included in that severe thunderstorm warning. Mount Pleasant as well, and this will go all the way down into Etheridge, Lawrenceburg, and pretty soon getting closer toward places like Linville. And these storms have been very fast moving. They've actually been well ahead of what we'd anticipated by at least I don't know, a couple hours, hour or two uh, for coming in in the timeline, but pretty on par. You know, this is we said it was going to be the overnight hours. We have had these tornado warnings still have a couple of active ones possible toward the upper Cumberland Plateau, too. Um, and then the, we, of course, we have this severe thunderstorm warning going until 530 down to the south of us. So Nashville pretty clear. You notice we see some yellows on the radar here. I'll zoom into our metro view. Still some heavy downpours here and there, even until just a few minutes ago. Us over here at WSMV in West Nashville at our studio, we were hearing some loud claps of thunder, some lightning. Uh, Seems to have stopped a little bit at least, but still a lot of rain coming down. We've been seeing in our live shots too. We've been checking in with Thomas Davis, who's out in Cheatham County. That rain still coming down. Really, the only flooding concern we have is up in southern Kentucky as that flash flood warning uh, still stays in effect until 945 today. And it's really for southern Kentucky because they've had a lot of rain this morning. In fact, let's pull up that uh, rainfall total. And you can see where the yellow colors are is where we've had the most rain in the last 24 hours. And we'll take a little pixel here and show you just about how much. About three inches over there into northern Tennessee. That's closer, closer up toward that line, but right near southern Kentucky, out near Hopkinsville and Murray, you've been seeing about three inches of rain. Down south of us, south of Linden there, it looks like uh, hugging over that Wayne County near Hohenwald. 
about two and a half inches of rain out there. Close to three, closer in toward uh, Hickman County. Uh, but definitely a lot of rainfall that we've seen, and, and we'll continue to see that rain as this line still pushes through the midstate. Put a time lapse on this real quickly over the last just 30 minutes. We'll show you a good view. I mean, this has been very fast. We've had tornado warnings moving at 60 miles an hour, severe thunderstorm warnings over 50 miles an hour, 55 in some cases. Uh, so these are very quick. So as soon as they come in, they'll be quick to exit. So that's the good news with this at least. And as it pushes down, it's going to continue to track closer in toward Rutherford County, Cookville. You should be getting some of these storms here soon. And then down closer toward Lawrenceburg, even places like Pulaski, uh, down toward Coffee County. You'll be seeing that line of storms sooner rather than later. Yeah, this is just an unbelievable event um, where we think about all the damage it has done so far. And we think that there are still 15 counties that haven't seen it yet and so it continues to move along and so what we are doing right now is we're positioning crews all in these damaged areas we just got an update i just stepped into the newsroom and talked to some of the crews out there and some of the managers and we found out that sneed road in kingston springs where we just got a live report from we've actually had several reports from sneed road tonight um very heavily damaged some of the some of the homes there are, are in terrible shape. And then Butterworth Road in Kingston Springs as well, just the same. A lot of significant, not just a couple shingles off, but significant structural damage to some of the homes. So it sounds like something um, big and not just um, an EF0, but maybe an EF1, EF2, um, maybe EF2 touched down in that area. We don't know until we can get eyes on it, and the Weather Service won't know until they can get eyes on the damage out there, but it does not sound good. I also heard that we heard before that 40, Interstate 40 west of Nashville out toward Dixon, uh, I forget how far west it went, is closed, I think in the eastbound direction, south of Dixon, south of Dixon to Duck River. Now I'm hearing that parts of Highway 70 getting out of Nashville back to Dixon it is shut down. And so if you if you're got closures on both 40 and 70, that's really the main east-west thoroughfares in those areas. Um, so it's going to be a slow go for a lot of people this morning. They wanted to come maybe to Nashville to do some shopping from uh, west of town. I mean, this may impact you. You wanted to go out toward Memphis. That may impact you. And so check our News 4 app. We're going to give you live updates on the traffic as we get more through the morning time. But before you go somewhere that may have been impacted, and certainly Dixon and Burns and Kingston Springs sounds like they've had some sort of circulation that may have caused a lot of damage, um, you just got to be careful before you just start your Saturday. Sun comes up in an hour and a half, and for, for most of us, thank God, you know, it's going to be all right. But some people really got hit hard last night, and as soon as we get our reporters uh, in these various locations, we're going to feed this to you right away. In fact, we've got some information right now. Rebecca? Who's on their way to spots all over the mid-state that have been impacted by this, but we want to get you to some images now that are already in our newsroom of some of the effect and the damage that we are already seeing here overnight. We want to take you first to some images that we've already showed you in Kingston Springs of a rescue out of a mobile home. This happened Overnight, not long ago, our photojournalist Thomas Davis was there as crews arrived. You can see that mobile home was clearly lifted. It looked like it landed on some cars there um, and crews beginning to remove debris. We are waiting for an update here on the condition of any people that may have been inside that mobile home at the time. Again, we have crews on the ground in Kingston Spring working to get you that information. But you see, you know, a couple dozen at least rescue crews there trying to get into that mobile home there this morning. I mean, just an unbelievable and devastating scene. And I, I know from listening to our meteorologists here our morning, all morning, they're saying most likely very probable a tornado here in Kingston Springs, but that has not been confirmed as of yet. Um, we want to update you here as well on the state of things across the state. Three people are dead after two separate tornadoes confirmed ripped through parts of northwest Tennessee. The Obion County Emergency Management Director told WNC, WMC, rather, our sister station out in Memphis, that one person died in Obion County. Two others are dead in Lake County. 
Um, so already confirmed a, a deadly storms have moved through our state here overnight. Just terrible and unbelievable damage. You're seeing those images on your screen. Debris just strewn everywhere. Trees down. Um, people's homes completely destroyed. And again, these are just images that we're getting overnight in the dark. And these stories always get harder and more difficult to look at as the sun comes up and as we get our crews on the ground to get a better picture of exactly what took place here overnight. Um, there was an apparent tornado spotted moving through Fort Campbell in Clarksville. It's a little hard to see this image, but if you look closely, you can see a very thin, very dark funnel cloud right through the middle of that photo. I mean, it just looks like a snapshot out of a horror film. Um, really just an unbelievable image captured here. Again, this was in Clarksville, Tennessee. It was spotted by a viewer a little after 1 a.m. this morning. You can see it sort of making its way between those houses there. Again, if you look closely at your screen, the the sky is dark, so it's difficult to see, but a very thin uh, funnel cloud there spotted in Clarksville, Tennessee overnight just after 1 a.m. A home torn apart in Cottage Grove. We want to get you to some images there. Cottage Grove is in Henry County, Tennessee. These images are so, so difficult to see. I mean, that home completely collapsed. Looks like it was torn in half. Um, again, this is in Henry County, Tennessee in Cottage Grove. And you can see that in this path of these storms is always so fascinating because you can see the car looks almost untouched, unmoved, and the home just completely taken off of its foundation, it looks like. Um, possibly strong winds that came through the area. No one was hurt. We can confirm that no one was hurt in this. Thank goodness. Uh, the damage is significant, but again, no injuries reported there. I want to get you to Kentucky now. Um, really, really awful preliminary reports out of Kentucky this morning. We heard from the governor. Um, just after four o'clock in the morning here, central time, that they fear that at least 50 people were killed in Kentucky overnight as a result of these storms. An absolutely staggering number. The governor believes that that death toll will very likely rise to as many as 70 people. Uh, we have not had an update as of again about four o'clock this morning, but again at that hour the fear was at least 50 people lost their lives in storms that ripped through Tennessee. You're looking specifically at Mayfield, uh, just flattened. It, it appears that the neighborhoods in the areas here are, have been completely flattened by this storm. Um, these buildings are completely irrecognizable. Um, and, and just gutted. So we are awaiting another update out of Kentucky this morning. Uh, and just to give you some context for for how deadly and how um, and catastrophic this has been. I mean, I'm getting push notifications from my phone from the New York Times, from national publications already reporting the damage out of Tennessee. So this is certainly a really tragic story we're going to see unfold here this morning and we'll of course keep you updated. We want to get you to one of our live crews that is on the ground here this morning. Tosin Fakile is in Madison here in Davidson County. Tosin, tell us what you're seeing. We're at Rebecca, we're on Gallatin Pike in Madison, and we're on our way to another damage, but we had to stop because we saw fire crews here. And what they're doing is there was reports of a gas leak at this restaurant right here. They took the ladder, went on top of that roof, and they said debris knocked off probably the AC unit on there, and that's what maybe clipped the gas line that caused that damage. And that's what they're working on. The power on that has been caught off. We've been seeing debris everywhere. Let me point your direction to the sign for this donut shop right here. As you can see, bent over, almost kind of mangled. And I'm guessing parts of that sign is what's lying all over the street here. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of fire presence here. But this is just a glimpse of the damage that's here in Madison. I was talking to firefighters before we came on air, and they tell me that there's trees down, there's power lines down, there's actually some power lines down right here. And there's some more damage going this way towards Neely's Bend. So once we're done with this live report right now, Rebecca, we're going to make our way further into Madison to see what other kind of damage was caused by the storms and possible tornadoes that roll through Davidson County. Back to you. Wow. Okay, Tosin, thank you. Please stay safe out there. As Thomas Davis mentioned earlier this morning, those power lines, some of those dangerous things if you're up walking around this morning. Uh, so avoid that at all costs and, of course, be wary of those power lines. We're taking you now back out to East Tennessee. This is damage in Dresden, Tennessee, just east of Paris. Uh, that's where many of the images are coming out of here this morning. It's where the storm started and we're seeing the first of some video, more down power lines, down trees. Uh, you can see someone directing traffic there. Um, just everything demolished here. It's uneven clear to tell if that was a home that we just looked at, but just absolutely catastrophic damage. You can see rain even still coming down or at least when this video uh, was taken. 
collapsed, buildings collapsed around those cars there. I mean, these images are absolutely devastating. We're seeing them for the first time here with you folks. I mean, all this is unfolding here for us as well. And uh, these images are incredibly hard to see this morning, the aftermath of these deadly storms that ripped through Middle Tennessee overnight. We want to get to now uh, some damage in Donaldson, closer here to our area, here in this station's area. Uh, really even hard to make out what this video is here, but you saw that lightning in the sky. It looks like a downed oh tree, God. and you can hear the people reacting in the background um, as they wake up and, and walk out of their houses to see the effect of these storms, these violent storms that pass through. Hearing the tornado sirens here, and that looks like it, it could even be a funnel there, at least a very, very dark cloud in the sky that's passing over. Really, really frightening images um, already being reported here. Um, we want to get you a time-lapse video of the storm moving through the metro area. Wow. Again, this is the first time we're seeing a lot of these images too, folks. Uh, we're waking up to this with you uh, and, and trying to get really a grasp on what happened here overnight and what the impact has been. And just unbelievable that you can see that torrential rain hitting the camera as we go through a time lapse. I'm not sure what the exact time period is here on this video, how much time actually lapses from the beginning of it to the end. But here's a snapshot of what Nashville looked like as it weathered the storm overnight. We're going to go now uh, to Tiptonville, Tennessee, where several people were injured. A cabin was hit there. Again, reporting several people injured. This is in Lake County, Tennessee. This is video from a viewer who was at a resort at Cypress Point when a tornado hit. Now, this is one of the counties where a tornado has actually been confirmed. We reported here uh, earlier in the show that in Obion and Lake County, we've got confirmed tornadoes. Our meteorologists um, seem to think that we are going to get more of those confirmed as the morning goes on. But again, this viewer video after injuries in Tiptonville, Tennessee, out of Lake County, uh, people did lose their lives in Lake County over well as night, just to give you some context for how brutal the storms were in that area and you can actually see a tornado in the distance through the storm when the lightning flashes if you pay close attention in this video the viewer who sent this in says when it hit the tornado sucks sucked a cabin over them unbelievable um, everyone did survive but two people were injured in the storm in this particular area of tipton uh, tennessee we're going to take you out to arkansas now uh, where one person died um, and uh, several others were injured after a possible tornado hit a nursing home in Arkansas. I'm not sure. Oh, it looks here on our screen that the tornado was confirmed, so not even possible. We're talking about Arkansas in Monette, Arkansas. That's just northeast of Memphis. This is a picture of emergency crews responding to that scene. Um, a tornado was spotted in the area, and our sister station in Memphis is reporting that at least 20 people were trapped inside Monette Manor, which is a nursing home. I mean, that is just... It's unbelievably heartbreaking. It's really hard to even wrap your mind around. Um, and officials are calling the damage to the nursing home a mass casualty event. We are certainly thinking of the people in, that, in, in those communities. Uh, and you can see that this storm has covered a lot of ground this morning. We've taken you all the way out to Arkansas here in our damage coverage. But right now, uh, we want to take you to Brandon Smith, who I believe is in Dixon. Here's some video of our photojournalist, Brandon Smith. He's out there live right now. You can see crews are already on the ground trying to clean up the damage that has been left in the path of this storm overnight. Uh, so you see them trying to pick up what looks like a tree that has been demolished, or several trees rather, um, out in Dixon. So again, if you're just joining us here, it's 523 this morning. If you're just waking up, we're talking about a violent, violent string of storms um, that have swept through the mid-state in Kentucky, um, which Dan and Melanie have been tracking for us very diligently since last night, really. I mean, you guys have been incredible um, and you've been talking about the storm for several days, really. What are we talking, uh, what are we seeing rather right now, Dan? Well, what we're seeing, thankfully, is no tornado warnings but we still have some severe thunderstorm warnings as we look at on the Lynx machine, uh, full worn real-time radar. And so this is gonna show some new warnings, one that impacts Putnam County. So it's been pretty quiet in Cookville. It's been quiet in southern parts of Overton County, but now that's changing. Severe thunderstorm warning in effect until six o'clock. And so any of the damaging wind gusts type of speeds that we've had so far tonight in other counties could be impacting Cookville and Baxter um, essentially in the next couple of minutes. Baxter, it's on top of you. Cookville, it's about to move in. 
it crosses Highway 111 here in about five minutes, and it gets to Monterey probably another seven minutes after that. So these have been very fast moving. Here's the time lapse for the last 30 minutes. And so the leading edge of this is going to cause the problems. So let me stop that time lapse. Let me do a new storm track for you. And it's moving in this general area. I'm going to try that one more time. I didn't start it correctly. Uh, but essentially, it's going to roll towards southern parts of Fentress County in just a little bit. Here's the latest track. And so if you're watching in Cookville, time now, 525. Hey, five minutes. It's on top of you. Cookville High School, 532. Tennessee Tech, same time, ballpark. All good. Rickman, Rickman, that's up in Overton County, 539. Monterey, if you're driving from Cookville to Crossville, you start climbing fast on Interstate 40. And when you stop climbing temporarily, um, that's Monterey. So it's essentially the Cumberland Plateau in Putnam County, 544. At you and your high school there, Highland at 545. Uh, appropriately named Windletown 551. That's not the first time we've mentioned Windletown tonight in Plateau at 552. We'll get back to the radar in just a moment, but Rebecca, she has an update. Let's go back to her. Okay, we're getting alerts, Dan, out of the city of Mount Juliet. Um, a tweet says that due to weather and reports an impact of severe weather in the area, they have decided to cancel their Christmas parade. We're expecting an update here right now, a press conference from the city of Mount Juliet. Sign up. I'll put this on the screen for you, uh, but you just text MJ to 67283. Uh, text those letters MJ to 67283, and you'll be signed up for our MJ alert system. Just continue to scroll. damage and just waiting for the sun to come up to see what else. Yeah, exactly, Karen. I think a lot of residents are in your situation. It's very dark out, the power's out, and I think everyone is just waiting for some daylight to try to determine the extent of the damage. Brian's asking if we need any help. He's a truck, glove, still toe, shoes, and safety glass. And Brian, we appreciate that. Right now, there's no need for help. In fact, we had a lot of staff come in and we were able to send staff home because once we assessed everything that occurred, uh, we wanted to send our staff home to get some sleep because they, of course, have to work later this evening. Tina just says here, her road is closed on Saundersville Ferry, trees blocking and can't get out. All right, let's see what else we got. Any new questions that uh, came in? A question to restate the road closure and the current road closure for us in the city limits of Mount Juliet is South Green Hill at Willoughby Station Boulevard. Okay, but it seems like we have a lot of road closures across the county, and, and there's a lot of folks going out right now working on, on clearing those different areas. Um, before I end this broadcast, I want to be sure everyone knows that our Christmas parade today uh, has been canceled. Of course, that's a hard decision to make uh, for any city leadership team, but with the impacts across our community, many homes damaged cosmetically, uh, 10 to 12, significantly damaged with their structure. Of course, around our area, up in Kentucky, other Middle Tennessee areas have been impacted by, by tornadoes uh, and other type of wind events. Again, not totally sure what exactly it was just yet. Weather Service has to make that determination. But the parade today it is canceled. Again, a super hard decision to make. Uh, but when you have impacts like this in your community, you need to focus on those impacts rather than focus on uh, a Christmas parade, unfortunately. So I just wanted to keep everyone update on, on that. Okay, that was an update from the public information officer from Mount Juliet Police Department here this morning. Just updates on preliminary damage, road closures, and again, you heard that their, their Christmas parade has been canceled. And I want to remind everyone that this is a community that has just been through a deadly tornado um, back in March of 2020, on March 3rd. Of course, we all remember that. And Dan, I've heard you guys sort of referencing that event. I'm seeing, seeing speculation on Twitter um, that this is going to be one of the longest track tornadoes we've seen in a long time. Can you give us some context for how this is sort of comparing to what we saw in March 3rd as far as the path. Yeah, well, on March 3rd, uh, we had the tornado touchdown in John Toon Airport that's west of downtown Nashville. It rolled over toward Germantown and then continued on the ground for a while and then 
was in Mount Juliet, then eventually into Cookville, did not stay on the ground the whole time. Exactly how long was it on the ground? I can't recall exactly. How long was the tornado today on the ground or a number of tornadoes? We don't know until that assessment is made uh, by the weather service. But what we can say is that Mount Juliet, we just heard from the captain there, the circulation, if it was a tornado that may have impacted Mount Juliet, started on the northeast side of Brentwood in Davidson County. And it rolled up toward the airport in that general area, up toward Donaldson Hermitage, and it rolled right over Mount Juliet, not far from the interstate, not far from Highway 70. Thank goodness the weather's a lot better now. They just have light rain, and so they can focus on helping folks out and checking things out. Um, but it was a rough night in Mount Juliet. Um, it was a very rough night in our southwest Kentucky uh, counties. Um, Lisa Spencer started wall-to-wall -wall coverage right around, I think it was 11 o'clock. And, and, and it was a, a situation where a storm went this way right over Bowling Green. That could be the longest track one. We'll see when it's all said and done. That was the strongest circulation that we think we saw today. But there were other circulations as well. Good news for you. We don't have tornado warnings in effect right now. Here's a time lapse for the last 30 minutes. You see the yellow polygons. Those are severe thunderstorm warnings. And right now, there's just one active in Middle Tennessee. And it's the one we talked about probably 10 minutes ago. Let's give you an update. It's about to hit Cookville. Severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 6 o'clock in the morning. And with that, there could be more damaging wind gusts. I suspect that a lot of the damage reports this morning already are because of straight line damaging wind, not just tornadoes. Um, these storms have been so strong with their very strong wind that's being brought down to the ground from above. So here's the latest timing on that. Cookville starting to move in here momentarily, just a couple minutes, 536, all good 537, Rickman 539. Uh, in your area, Monterey, current time for you is 552. That doesn't mean we don't have strong storms. We still have strong storms all along this line. Any of these could generate winds to 40 miles an hour. Starting to work into Auburn Town. Smithville, this looks like it's pretty strong. About to move into you. Not quite there, but heads up Smithville. There could be some strong winds. Woodbury, you've got some rain starting to develop there. We'll have to watch. This is the zone down and through here where we just had a canceled severe thunderstorm warning for this general area or a little west of there. So no warning right now, but it's an area to track. And we'll keep watching that. There could be a little rotation that develops along some of these in time as well. So we're not out of the woods in terms of a tornado threat. And then just so you know, if you're watching from southeastern parts of the mid-state, there is still severe weather down in northern Alabama. And it's possible with a storm track of that one, we'll actually see that move up toward the mid-state. I'm going to back it up a little bit and then put it forward. You can see how it's moving up toward Giles County in time, maybe Lincoln more in Franklin counties. Couple footnotes from what Rebecca talked about uh, at length. The Mayfield tornado that sounds like it killed 50 people, maybe more. See Mayfield? in relation to Nashville. Here's Nashville right here. The Mayfield damage happened around 920 tonight. So this outbreak started probably five hours before our outbreak started. Much of Missouri had severe weather, a chunk of Illinois, and then it moved down into Middle Tennessee. And I just zoom out momentarily before I send things over to Melanie. And what we see for the main body of the storm it's losing some of its steam. We have just regular rain in southeast Ohio. Notice we have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings in East Tennessee and East Kentucky, a couple down in northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, and then the storms are really running out of gas down toward Jackson. So the good news is the strongest weather has happened, and now we're in the, in the, for, the final quarter, the fourth quarter of this thing. And with any luck at all, in about three hours, it will be done and then we can just assess and sort of recover. Melanie? All right, yeah, fingers crossed on that one, Dan. But you know what? We are not out of the woods just yet as far as rotation. Dan just mentioned that with these storms that are rolling through, some of them have produced just a lot of energy there where they could see some rotation. And that's why our tornado watch is still going to stay in effect for our far eastern and our far southern counties until this actually should say 11 o'clock. The 5 o'clock in the morning one was actually including Nashville. That one has now expired. All the counties 
you see here in this kind of red orange color that goes until 11 o'clock this morning. On top of that, we have the wind to deal with too. We've had just incredibly strong straight line winds all throughout the overnight hours into early this morning, and a lot of those winds has been what's doing a lot of the damage here. Tornadoes, of course, too, but these winds have really been knocking down trees, power lines, a lot of folks waking up this morning without any power and maybe even some damage to your home. Wind advisory will stay in effect until noon today. We're talking about really sustained winds anywhere from 15 to 20 miles per hour with gusts getting up over 40, even over 50 miles an hour. Looks like this should calm down though as far as that, that gust strength as we continue out through the morning hours. Once that kind of weakens and pushes through, I don't think we'll see gusts as strong as that, but it is still possible. Future cast showing the rest of the morning. This line of storms that we're seeing right now that's just south of Nashville and out toward the plateau. Looks like it's going to linger here a little bit longer through the morning hours. We should see most all of it out of here, though, by lunchtime or even just before lunchtime, really. Possibly just some lingering showers, but really the, the nasty stuff out of here by then. So back toward places like Livingston, Cookville, you could even see a few just light rain showers by around 11 o'clock this morning. Everyone is done with the rain by lunchtime, right around noon, 1 o'clock. I and mean, we're going to see just a lot of cloud cover. Notice, though, behind the rain, our front begins to move through, and that's really going to drop our temperatures. We're going to start off really the first half of our day with temperatures in the 50s for the most part, and then watch them just gradually decrease throughout the day. By 4 o'clock, we're already at 47 degrees in Nashville, 44 in Hopkinsville, hanging on to some 50s down here where we saw a little bit warmer temperatures earlier on, like 50 in McMinnville. And then by tonight, the clouds begin to push out as well. By 8 o'clock, we should start to see a lot of clearing out to our west. And then by Nashville tonight around 10, 11 o'clock. And those clear skies will help our temperatures really take a tumble down to below freezing overnight. So got to make it through today and then tomorrow, really a beautiful day. It's going to start off very chilly with temperatures in the 20s for many spots. But we're going to see a lot of sunshine for us tomorrow and definitely more seasonable temperatures. We've had a couple of very warm days. We're back to where we should be for this time of December by tomorrow afternoon. 53 degrees for the high in Nashville. One more day below freezing it looks like before we head into another warming trend. Would you believe it or not? We've got 60s returning Monday and Tuesday with plenty of sunshine. By Wednesday and Thursday, we've got more 70 degree weather to come. So we got to take a closer look at this. We've been really focused on today's weather that I haven't really had a chance to really deep dive into Thursday, but looks like Thursday night we see our next system move through into Friday and that will bring us some more rain showers, um, maybe some storms, but uh, hopefully nothing like this. Mm. Back to the 60s by Friday with lows by then in the 50s, so definitely feeling a little bit warmer. Okay, Melanie, thank you so much. We want to get now back to photojournalist Thomas Davis, who has been at a mobile home rescue in Kingston Springs uh, for at least an hour here now. Thomas, any update on people's condition that were potentially inside? Uh, the one person that was rescued out of the mobile home is considered in critical condition this morning. Right now, you, what you're looking at is a command center uh, for the outside of the Kingston Springs area. We've got multiple uh, units from multiple different fire departments here, Clay Lake, uh, Cheatham Counties here. Uh, just people that are, they're all coming together and going down the roadways here and going door to door. Uh, to a lot of these houses that are back here off of Sneed Road and Highway 70. We are right next to where they did rescue the woman uh, here out of the trailer. Uh, that's where we kind of uh, set up this morning. That was the first uh, rescue that they had uh, received this morning that they had to respond to. As right now, the chief is telling me they have not had to rescue anybody else, uh, but they still have a long way to go. They are waiting for the daylight to get here so that they can see just how much damage. You can see uh, right here this building that's right next to where the woman was rescued uh, looks to be some type of business. It uh, has severe damage itself. And where the tornado went to uh, was down, there's a valley here just behind that building where it's really, really dark right now that you can see. But when it comes to daylight, what you'll be able to see is down through this valley, this house is down on the ground, just flattened from on both sides of the roadway. So they are waiting. That's why we have so many units at uh, this location right now, because they are going to have to go through each one of these houses and uh, searching door to door when it gets daylight, just to make sure that there is nobody inside and trapped this morning.
Gosh, so grateful for crews after a situation like this who run into the damage right after a storm blows through. Again, Thomas Davis reporting that a woman rescued out of a mobile home in Kingston Springs is in critical condition this morning. We want to get to another one of our photojournalists who was out in Dixon this morning. Last we saw, he was giving us some video of some mangled trees. It looks like we're looking at a home now here again in Dixon that crews just went inside of so a little hard to tell exactly what is going on but very similar I imagine as to what's happening in, in Kingston Springs we have crews going door to door checking on people to see if anyone's trapped making sure people are okay and getting them any medical attention at this point if they need it so again this is a look at Dixon County more of a zoomed out view of this house that crews just entered here now um, not a lot of apparent damage here on the facade that we can see at least in the dark but again cr crews are out there in full force this morning um, rescuing people if need be and, and just checking on the most affected neighborhoods here this morning. So again, that's Brandon Smith in Dixon, Tennessee here this morning. All right, I think we're going to toss back to our weather crews now. Yeah, and Rebecca, you know, a lot of these places, too, are probably doing some welfare checks at this time, too, because these storms came through overnight while most people were asleep. So that could be an issue of what's going on outside, outside too, and especially our western counties where we've had a lot of storms roll through overnight. You know, this, Melanie, a brand-new severe thunderstorm warning is with that cell that we just told you about 10 minutes ago coming out of Alabama. So pretty much hit Florence. Yep. Um, it's holding its own pretty good. St. Joseph down in your area, five points. And you can see how it grows up to the main body of Pulaski, or I should say Giles County, toward Pulaski. And the reason for that, thank you, is because it's coming out of Alabama moving northeast bound. So we're going to do a storm track on this one. Again, we have a tornado watch that continues for southeastern parts of mid-state until 11. So here's the timing. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can get a better view of that area. But Loretto, um, you could be impacted by damaging straight line wind here shortly. Right now, Lexington, and that's not the Lexington out in West Tennessee. It's another Lexington in northern Alabama. Uh, Anderson at 554, Minor Hill at 6 o'clock. So Minor Hill is in southern southwestern parts of Giles County. And again, you've got this severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 615. So we'll probably see more of these. And we may see that same cell continue to move up toward Fayetteville, Estill Springs, Winchester, Tullahoma, maybe Grundy County and Altamont in time. And so that's a good distance away. So we told you for a while now that it's going to be a few more hours. That's 110 miles it still has to track across. So we'll be, we'll be at this uh, probably till 9 o'clock. Um, for the lower Cumberland Plateau, it, it seems at least. So Nashville is in some light to moderate rain, but soon this is going to turn off. We've gotten a number of damage reports tonight from Hendersonville, and so when the rain ends in less than an hour, it's going to make it a lot easier for the folks to, to do their work in Dixon and Burns, Kingston Springs and here as well. But I want to just do a retrospective for a moment on what happened tonight in parts of the area. This is this is going back probably nine hours. And so the Mayfield tornado, Mayfield, Tennessee, has stuck with me the story about at least 50 people losing their life in Kentucky, pardon me. There is the cell. We're backing up to 925 or so. This is the cell that caused the destruction and the loss of life over Mayfield. And if we just continue to go a little farther back, we're going to see that this thing came all the way into Mayfield, Kentucky from before Jonesboro. It looked like it went tornadic just southwest of Jonesboro. That's what you call a long track supercell thunderstorm. And it produced a tornado for a very long distance. And I want to show you how strong some of these winds were. This is as the tornado was hitting Mayfield, Kentucky. And let me go to one more picture a little farther after that. We'll check on some of these winds. Let me come back just one right there. Let's take a look at how strong the rotation was within this. And you can see the bright greens mm -hmm. and bright reds. 107 miles an hour against 53. Collectively, wow. 160 miles an hour worth of rotation. Now, granted, this is not at the surface. This is several thousand feet above the ground. But it shows how strong the rotation was tonight in a very tight area causing that loss of life. Now, let's go deeper into our area because we had another cell that came along and had very destructive winds too. Watch it in the middle of your screen. You see it on the west side of Dover. This caused some damage. This storm is the rotation 
around Big Rock. That's northeast of Dover in, in Stewart County. Then it moved into southern Kentucky. Look at how strong it was along the Tennessee-Kentucky line. It was right in this area when the Weather Service said, hey, we're seeing debris up to about 16,000 feet above the ground. That's five miles. So again, rotation with this along the Tennessee-Kentucky line, 150 miles an hour, and that storm rolled all the way farther northeast of there, all the way to Bowling Green. And it rolled over Bowling Green, and we got confirmation of some sort of uh, problems in Bowling Green with damaging weather. We don't know if it was because of a tornado or what, but that just shows how powerful and how extreme the wind was in the atmosphere tonight. Things have changed quite a bit in the last six hours, and we still have two severe thunderstorms in a mid-state in a big band of heavy, heavy rain that could have some strong winds, and it's right in through here in between those two warnings to maybe 40 or 45 miles an hour. But it's got very heavy rain. Look at how much rain has fallen with this so far. And you can see in some areas we've had more than three inches, three and a half inches. And because of that, there has been some flooding. There has been some flooding for our southwest Kentucky counties. Flash flood warning continues there. And I'll show you that area a little more clearly here. I'll take off that recap on the radar and it shows this whole zone has a flash flood warning. So watch out in this part of southwest Kentucky for some localized high water. Hopefully it's uh, mostly receded by now indefinitely. Watch out in this part of Middle Tennessee as well because some of these areas have got more than three inches of rain. And so some heavy rain in addition to lightning continues to be a concern. I like what I see in the forecast charts in terms of some of the energy from this being pulled away. We still have that tornado watch, but I want to show you a, a change in air mass coming in. Melanie talked about this before. She said, hey, it's going to be super cold tonight. And the reason for that, we have a front and it's right where you see the packing. Much drier air. It still feels like Florida. If you step outdoors <laughs> right now, it feels awesome. If you like that sort of thing, but much drier air is taking over Arkansas, Missouri, and it's starting to feel like winter once again. That's the, the dew point of how dry the air is. This is the air temperature. It's 72 down toward Lawrenceburg, but it's 35 back towards Springfield, Missouri. So all this nasty weather was in part fueled by a very strong front coming through the mid-state. Mm -hmm. You can see where that lightning is. And you know, it's gonna get so cold tonight, Dan, and there are so many crews, NES, we've got all these other counties surrounding with so many power outages. So these crews are gonna be working you know, over time to try to get power back on tonight because we're going to get temperatures down below freezing going into overnight. Uh, we already got reports that out in Dixon, they've opened up a shelter there at the YMCA in Dixon. Um, it, this is going to be for anyone who is displaced, so maybe has a lot of damage to their home, has no power. They're accepting people there. And meanwhile, here in Nashville, NES says more than 90,000 customers are without power, and that's just in the Nashville area alone. That's unbelievable. And so we know that number is going to be higher when you factor in the, the rest of the mid-state, southern Kentucky as well. You referenced some of the damage. Look at these damage reports, Melanie. You can see the T's. These are where we have good reason to believe that there were tornadoes tonight and it rolled all the way up through Bowling Green. And then we had a whole bunch of wind damage from another band of storms that rolled right over Nashville. And this is just some of it, just some of the reports. But look at like this one, for example, this may get the most attention out of Davidson County. And here's why. Take a look at that. The Nashville Airport wind measuring device, the anemometer, the ASOS, measured a peak wind with the weather tonight at 78 miles an hour. It's the third highest wind gust ever clocked at the airport. Wow. Yeah. And so I think the highest is the low 90s, if I remember correctly. But uh, that's how remarkable the wind was in that area. And then that area was what moved on toward Mount Juliet. May have actually triggered a tornado. We don't know. The Smyrna Airport gusted to near 60 miles an hour. But speaking of Dixon, um, Melanie mentioned that, that the, the, the um, shelters open. At least 12 structures on Mural Road and Cross Road, Cowan Road, uh, had heavy damage. Some people trapped in structures three miles south of Dixon. So what, a, what an unbelievable night. Hendersonville, look at all this. Due to high winds, multiple streets blocked by downed trees and power lines. There was a circulation right over Hendersonville for a time. We'll have to see whether or not that was tornadic. We, we just don't know yet. Good news on the Cookville cell. It looks like it's lost some definition. And so what that means to you is that 
we don't have that severe thunderstorm warning for you anymore. Monterey, the thing was trying to push to the east. I'm going to show you the last 45 minutes with this one, and it's almost like it slammed on the brakes. You see that? It just did not move into Cookville. And so the people in Cookville are like, where is my thunderstorm that was supposed to be here 15 minutes ago? This is why. So it, it, it stopped its eastward progression, and now we're getting into the circumstance of, all right, well, we're not going to get damaging wind gusts per se, but we've got to watch for very heavy rain that gets persistent. Training, you've heard it before probably, and when multiple thunderstorm clusters move over the same area, sort of like boxcars on a train, um, you can get a lot of rain pile up. You can get, you know, two, three, four inches of rain in just a few hours. So. We're going to watch for that. We don't have a flood watching effect or anything like that. Um, let me try to remove this from the screen and look at the one active severe thunderstorm warning that we do have. And it shows down into Lawrence, Wayne, and Giles County. Now, good news in Wayne County, that threat has gone away. This storm has moved out of your area, Wayne County. And so Fairview in Wayne County, Collinwood, you're fine. So it's really Loretto and Minor Hill and then east of there that we're dealing with that potential for damaging wind gusts. This is Highway 31, so it runs from essentially Ardmore up through Pulaski. That's going to be hit here shortly, but it's Minor Hill that's going to get the worst of the weather from this. That's, that's the strongest part. It looks like it's trying to bow out. We're going to have to watch this thing. It may be trying to amp up. And because we're so close to Huntsville, we're just going to pull up the Huntsville radar just for a moment and look at that and see if there's any rotation trying to develop. And it looks like there might be. So this, this could be our next storm that causes problems with rotation, maybe a tornado, we'll have to see. Yeah, what do you see? They're saying on the, on the NASA Weather Service chat that there might possibly be a tornado warning issued if, if this does there you intensify. Go. Okay, so, so we're all looking, all the, all the meteorologists in the mid-state right now are looking at the same stuff. <laughs> and, and they're seeing the same thing, that this bears watching. So heads up, Loretto. Minor hill, it's coming your way. Um, you don't need to be in your safe spot right now, but if it intensifies the rotation, um, th then you will. And we'll certainly let you know right here on News 4. Right now, severe thunderstorm warning for, again, just Giles and Lawrence. Um, back toward Wayne, you're in good shape. You don't have to worry about that. And then just heavy rain, Melody, up and down this line. Yeah, and they've now canceled the severe thunderstorm warning for Overton and Putnam County. So that one, uh, if it hasn't already gone away, yep or maybe it's hanging on there. Yep, no, it's, it's dropped. Yeah, so um, looking good up there. We had some concerns up there earlier, but now we're just waiting for this this line to pass through. And after it does, it will pretty much be done with any of the severe stuff out there. Probably some lingering showers today. After this passes through, it's going to be a very gloomy day. Lots of cloud cover. And we could even see a couple of sprinkles throughout the day from some of those clouds as well. And you can see back behind there, Dan's showing you once that front comes through too and, and knocks away the clouds it'll bring in all that cool air as well and so it's going to get very cold tonight so when we're talking about you know all the power outages you know we're going to have crews working around the clock trying to get everyone's power restored to places where you can stay and, and live if your home is not damaged because it's going to get very cold tonight would not be surprised if metro opened up some of their shelters and, and surrounding counties doing the same thing uh, just for people who are possibly displaced or you know maybe just don't have power it's going to be a cold night tonight so uh, all the rain coming through. We haven't had too much of a flood concern. You know, I, I was thinking that maybe we'd get a flash flood, either watch or warning issued a little bit down south, like back toward Linden, Columbia. They've seen a lot of this rain. Uh, the 24 hour total show they've had about three inches in those areas, but looks like that's going to stop here pretty soon. So, you know, we're in good shape going forward. This this looks like April, doesn't yeah, it? It it's, does. It's it amazing does. that we're in the month of December, and I don't know if you heard this stat earlier this week, but Middle Tennessee, since the 1800s, since weather records started being kept, have had 21 tornadoes. Wow. 21 December, in December tornadoes in Middle Tennessee. Five of those happened that have been confirmed this past Monday, and then seven more happened in the years prior going back to 2015. So, mm. so, so more than half have happened in the last six years and if we tack on all the tornadoes, 
we've had late last night yeah. and early this morning. That number is going to go up for sure. <laughs> All right, Lauren Lowry joining us right now. Good morning, Lauren. Yeah, good morning, you guys. I've been watching your coverage since the alerts for Davidson County went off at 3 o'clock this morning, sitting around the TV with my family, <laughs> like a, a lot of people probably across the mid-state, knowing that this was going to happen, knowing that our forewarned weather team, the certified most accurate here in Nashville, was going to get us through it, and you guys have. So thank you, guys, for all of your amazing coverage here during the overnight hours. We've been wall-to-wall -wall since 10 45 last night. We've never let you go here, Middle Tennessee. Now, there are some concerning things that have been happening in Kentucky these last several hours. Governor Andy Bashir addressed those concerns and the loss of life within the last couple of hours. Listen to this. Good morning. We are nearing the end of the most severe tornado event in Kentucky.